With names such as Ray Hall, Andretti, Unser and Penske being synonymous with the fabric of motorsport in Northern America, the challenge of the 11 turn 2.238 mile circuit at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca will provide all and sundry a welcome test over 180 minutes of racing this afternoon. With its fair share of mid-speed corners and significant elevation changes, this circuit will provide close quarter racing and good strategy calls to ensure us of what is in prospect will be a titanic battle to see who will be victorious. But with places such as the, the corkscrew, where the drivers away to 5.5 storey drop, welcomes the competitors to over a distance of less than 500 feet of the hallowed tarmac here in Monterey, California. A total of over 100 drivers from 39 different teams will go into battle, with 12 manufacturers represented as the top three in the point standings are covered by just three points after last time out in Italy. Lotus Sport Rosneft moved to second in the standings after their win at Monza, putting them level on 86 points, with current championship leaders Odox Motorsport still keeping themselves at the top of the tree with the win at the season opener back in Hungary and the final step of the rostrum last time out. Yaz Heat Richard Mille has been the only other team this season to hit the podium, having a good run so far with successive runner-up spots on the podium over both two rounds, which puts them third in the overall standings, just two points adrift. Welcome everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching the world, and welcome to the halfway point of season three of the SimGrid Endurance Cup by Thrustmaster, with myself, Alex Goldschmidt, joined by Ewan O'Leary, uh, for, and we are your commentary team for today's proceedings. Uh, Ewan, firstly, good to have you back here on the Sim Grid. This is going to be a real test for everybody here today. Uh, yeah, it is. It's great to be back. Thanks, Alex. And uh, yeah, it's a really, really challenging circuit. I actually hate it driving it. It really is awful. But uh, no, to, for these guys to drive, it's going to be very, very, very challenging indeed. Uh, and mistakes can be very easily punished around here. You mentioned about the, some of the iconic corners um, there, the corkscrew being one of them, uh, it, probably one of, the, one of, if not the most famous corner in all of America. Um, so uh, yeah, we, we'll have to watch out for that one. But uh, but no, it's been a remarkable championship so far, really, with only three teams able to get on the podium in Eva race. They're just in a different order. So it gives us this fascinating championship situation where we've got three teams separated by two points, which is um, quite ridiculous at this stage. Virtual drivers by TX3 also not too far behind. Uh, 24 points adrift at the moment. They could get involved today in their listen. And Team Vorzilla at Lexus I'm watching out for because we've been told anyway that the Lexus and the Audi may well be the stronger teams uh, to, to be looking out for. Or st sorry, the stronger cars to be looking out for here today. So um, they could really, really take a step forward in this championship and vault themselves in contention today. And with only three rounds to go, they kind of need to have a good race. If you, if you outside of that top three at the moment you need to get a good race right now just to get yourself in that conversation yeah well we're about to have a conversation momentarily let's bring in from the number 14 crew unicorns of love uh renee sievert with us uh renee firstly uh good to have you with us uh, it's been a bit of an up and down season for you guys in the bmw uh a race to forget at hungaring but you guys hit the top 10 uh, finishing 10th behind h3 racing last time out how are things feeling at the uh, Unicorns of Love camp uh, here at Laguna Seca? Uh, first of all, thanks for, for having me. Um, yeah, I think uh, Hungary was, was not a good race from us. Uh, we had a bad qualifying and the race was just a bit unlucky, I guess. Uh, got hit in the first rounds and then yeah, we, we just um, wanted to, to finish the race. Uh, Monster was, was very good. Um, the, the quality was so close and I thought my lab was good enough for top 10 but yeah the gaps were, were so close and yeah also the race were uh, was surprisingly good um, had a lot of fights and um, yeah top 10 was was really a, a pleasure for us um, I think Laguna will be a bit harder um, I think the track um, is, is much more difficult than Monza because of the uh, yeah, the difficult corners here and um, also our car feels not that good, I guess. Um, yeah, the <laughs> BMW feels like a tank and um, yeah, I think it, it will be very difficult today. Um, we hope that um, we get into big points, uh, maybe top 10 or such, but um, yeah, 
Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think um, that we will match like the cars like Audi or, or something like that. I mean, obviously, um, as you said, the BMW M6 uh, very much uh, one of the bigger cars on the grid but it is about keeping your nose clean and keeping out of trouble on that very very important first lap especially going down to the Andretti hairpin yeah yeah um, of course um, I think that's always uh, the key point um, keeping the first lap clean and um, yeah <laughs> in Hungary it was was um, a bit difficult we didn't get to to manage that um, but Monza was clean. I think Leon will be doing a good job. Um, he's driving his first race in the Endo Cup and he's a very good driver, very very talented. And um, yeah, I think we can manage that. Well, Rene, we'd like to wish you, Leon, and also Niels Klinkmüller, who's running with you guys, all the very best of luck here in round three of the season. Thanks. So a big thank you there to René Sivard from Unicorns of Love, the number 14 BMW, which currently sits at 17th of the standings. But now, to give you an idea of how to wrestle your way around the WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca, we're going to head to the Simsoc Hot Lap. Welcome to the Endurance Cup by Thrustmaster Hot Lap, sponsored by Simsoc, ultimate grip socks for sim racers. This time around, it's the 11 turn. 2.238 mile road course here in Monterey, California. WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca, we're on board with James Parker on board in the Aston Martin V8 Vantage. And of course, as always, the Simsop foot cap will give you an idea of the throttle and brake inputs from the driver. Over the crest through turn one, hard on the brakes down from fifth gear, into second through into the Etretti hairpin, turn two. Notice the brake and throttle modulation as James Parker puts down the pedal to the metal. Now, a little bit uh, of dabbing of the brakes before reapplying the throttle through turn three. Now into the right hander at four. A bit more brake use that particular time. Now up towards turn five underneath uh, the bridge of Mothers. Uh, down into another, down another gear, down into second this time as we start to make our climb up the ascent here at Laguna Seca. Into the left hander here at six, another dab of brake before reapplying the throttle. Let the car drift wide up the rail straight, and now it's turn seven, eight, and eight a. Simply known as the corkscrew. 5.5 storey drop in only 450 feet of track length. Now down through into the fast part here, through the left hander at Rainey's Curve, turn nine. Two more corners remaining. In fourth gear, James Parker applies the brakes and allows the car to coax its way through turn 10 at third gear at 145 kph. Now down all the way through the gearbox, into first gear, hit the apex on turn 11, run the car wide, and that is across the line here in the Aston Martin V8 Vantage. So that was your endurance cut by Thrustmaster Hot Lap, sponsored by SimSock. Ultimate grip socks for sim racers. Well, a big thank you as always to James Parker with the Simsock hot lap there. Qualifying now officially underway. 16 minutes and 50 seconds to go. First bank laps coming in and already the number 446, which has got uh, the, that is the Lexus with uh, Mirko Ferrari from SFR Italia, the number one car on a 122.626. But already it's a very green track here at the moment, Ewan. But hopefully the times will come to the drivers very very soon indeed yeah indeed we're expecting this track to just get faster and faster and faster until the very end so it may be a case of getting out here as late as possible um and then it, it, it being you know being the last man across the line pretty much and then the, that might bring whoever it is pole position we won't we'll see of course it's going to be exceptionally close we saw this last time out at monza how close it was and first round as well at the Hungary it's just going to be exceptionally close very very fine margins are going to separate these guys um, by the end of this session and uh, you can just see uh, by that track map as well it's really busy out there finding a bit of free track space for yourself is going to be fairly tricky as well yeah 36 cars out of the 39 that were on the practice server just a few moments ago are now out on circuit just over 2.2 miles 11 corners as Mirko Ferrari gets pipped to the post at the moment by Niels van der Kerkelt, but the Italian responds 
and then oh my goodness me the GTRC endurance team have got Florian Becker behind the wheel and he has just put in a 122 449 there's Fabian Puffet also known as seven one of the uh, team Ford Zilla crews and that's the team Ford Zilla Lexus uh, currently now he's up into second position he's just gone 27 thousandths quicker than Ferrari and then it's all changing so uh, Garcia in the 121 Odox Motorsport Audi quickest and then it's the 41 the Lada Sport Rosneft Aston Martin with Yaroslav uh, Shenatolov in the uh, in the car that actually won last time out at Monza and they are 0.23 of a second adrift and this is how competitive the insurance cup gets because the top 26 covered by just a fraction under make that the top 28 now covered by just under 1.1 seconds uh matteo uh, blotto from racing line motorsport in the 194 ah now i've just seen there was a car that just went off brought out the yellow flag i think that was the 166 uh, audi that just had a bit of, of, of uh, that, no, that was the 166, that was the Mercedes, my apologies there. Bastian Offerman and Jan Bitomski from Simracing.de. And there's the uh, 194 coming into the pit lane. Um, but already, uh, the 995, that is Ambassadors for Renwalten, that has got Marco Bischoff and Jonas van Droyten, that pairing in that McLaren. And the McLaren has also had a little bit of an adjustment ahead of this race here. But the custom BOP remains intact. Martin Schumacher uh, in the 4.11 goes 14th quickest, 4 tenths. Now, you in the top 34, covered by 1.482 seconds. That is exactly what we wanted to see here this afternoon. Well, here today at Laguna Seca, as Marcus Eichhorn from Leipzig Esports um now goes up to p6 0.12 off of garcia these times are getting quicker as the track is starting to evolve yeah i mean how would you be in sixth place yeah you know, i'm only one tenth down that that'll give me a good place no i'm sixth you know that's a ridiculous amount of time to you know, spread the top six but it's the way things are, are at the moment in this uh, championship as oh my goodness me marco Mur goes exactly the same time as Garcia out front in the 1-2-1 at the moment but he set his lap time afterwards so he is placed in second place that is just how close it is we were talking about fine margins at the start of this session that has never been more apparent really the fine margins the thousandths of a second are going to separate these guys and uh, you know it was just going to be one of those qualifying sessions where you can't take your eyes off until the very final moments because it's going to be decided in the very final moments. Somebody is going to come across the line in the in the last seconds, and they're going to snatch it away from somebody else. It's all about uh, you know being last out there, getting the track evolution right, and getting your car right at the right time. And uh, that's what these guys are aiming to do, of course. But uh, as I mentioned, thousands of a second are going to separate pole position. Uh, from the second row of the grid here today and yeah it's just going to be uh, it's just going to be on right towards the very end now leon otoki from unicorns of love has just put in a 122086 the bmw hits the front of the grid 78 thousandths ahead of garcia and muri uh, sheratolov uh, shevetolov and uh, bischoff ran at the top five covered by 0.129 Mikko Ferrari was initially the benchmark setter here at Laguna Seca in the Lexus RCF uh, GT3 5.4 litre naturally aspirated V8 engine and uh, a little bit of a wiggle there going through into the uh, left hander at turn 11 but he uh, heads his way across the line. Niels van der Kerkelt down in 13th position behind Martin Schumacher and there Mikko Ferrari responds to the work of Leon Otoki and goes to within 57 thousandths there you see the current live championship standings Lada Sport Rosneft, Odox Motorsport that's Yaz Heat, Richard Mille Virtual Drivers by TX3 and the Triple Three uh, which is the uh, Nissan uh, so Godzilla is represented by a couple of teams uh, in this uh, well, in, well one team if memory and now uh, Florian Becker is getting quicker but goes 11th 0.273 and uh, Conto Giannis in the uh, 34th and then Eichhorn in the num number 53 uh, has gone and that's the Leipzig Esports was P6 in that uh, in that Aston Martin but now rounds out the uh, top nine
Florian Becker from GTR Endur uh, C Endurance Team. Uh, ran in the Sprint Cup Season 3 quite recently. Uh, Unicorns of Love actually made a solo appearance in that. Oh, before we forget, we've got a little bit of an affiliate deal for you. If you sign up to a 12-month contract with ExpressVPN, courtesy of us here at the SimGrid, you can get three additional months free. So expressvpn.com forward slash the SimGrid. So at the moment, Florian Becker, who is uh, currently down in 11th position, heading down through the corkscrew, is about three or so tenths up. He's now going to go into the left-hander here at nine, Rainey's Curve. And uh, just a couple more corners remaining. How well anchored is this Porsche to this tarmac? Well, we're going to find out momentarily. So he now will go all the way down the gearbox, down from fourth to first. Tight on the apex, allows the Porsche yeah, there's still going to be an improvement for Becker, but where up the order is he going to fare? Goes up to P7 from 11th, so lost a little bit of time in the final sector. And that's quite crucial here, Ewan. Uh, you've got to keep it really, really very, very precise around this circuit. And it's also very tight, especially if you're going to go too wide in respective corners. It's very easy to dip a wheel onto the gravel here, on the, or the sand, I guess you call it, on the outside of these corners. Um, so uh, yeah, it's very, very important to keep on the road as we look at Matteo Blotto coming out of the final corner. There he is on the right-hand side of your screen, uh, driving in real life and uh, driving in the game, of course. Jumps up to 15th place. There's a couple of attempts of an improvement there for the Mercedes uh, driver. And so it, it looks like it, it, that's a decent lap, at least. Um, there are loads of different laps coming in, by the way, as Nerby comes over the line. It's a very, very good improvement for him. He was down in 33rd before, but now he's up inside the top 10. This is how think, quickly things can change, because you can see the order on the left-hand side. We can't even get enough people on the screen to show you five temps down. That's how close it is right now, as uh, Manos Gerardis comes over the line. The Greek driver into 22nd place in the Lamborghini. Yeah, they ran with the Ferrari 488 in the Sprint Cup Season 3, but they switched to the Huracan uh, GT3 Evo, the number 31 all-Greek crew. Marco Bischoff from Ambassadors for Renvelden in that very, very jazzly colour there. Uh, McLaren 720S. Uh, just also hearing that uh, Bastian Lindner from Good Time Racing in the number 100 Audi R8 LMS Evo, making his way through into the left-hander and is uh, aiming for the front row. There's been a yellow flag out for the XL Racing by Renfeld and Blue Car, uh, the number 73, which has just brought out the yellow flag, but has been retracted as they are going through uh, what would be turns turn five. Another one, a little bit of a drop for Lindner. Uh, so let's see how they fare from 25th. Goes P13 and uh, goes behind Team Forzilla Lexus's Fabian Piffet. Uh, by six one thousandths of a second, Marco Bischoff up into P2 ahead of uh, Mirko Ferrari. Uh, Shevetolov uh, currently uh, is looking at pole position, and there we go, the Aston Martin up into the top spot. A 129.960. Um, Luhana from Virtual Drivers by TX3, the number seven crew, drops a rear wheel on the dusty stuff. Uh, going through Rainey's uh, on the exit, but now we'll head through into turns 10, now into the left-hander at 11. Six and three quarter minutes of this fast-paced, action-packed qualifying session. Lehenaf goes across the line and stays P8 and was six one thousand slower. There's Fabian Pifay on the uh, screen, the picture in picture, but also as he's uh, going uh, through into that. Otoki's now responding to uh, Shevetalov uh, in the 41 Lada Sport Rosneft Aston Martin and at the moment we have I count this all right get this people top nine top nine top nine cover uh, top nine are representing nine different manufacturers that's how close it is a Toki improves and gets nine thousandths faster as Fabian Pifay in the Lexus jumps up to second 121 993 33 thousandths off uh Ewan this is the halfway stage they're still fighting like petulant children in a playground 
they are still fighting all over pole position at the moment and it's impossible to know where it's going to go at the moment. Marco Mure is coming out of the final corner right now and he is improving. What's the lap time going to be? It's second by just three thousandths of a second. That's so, so close to the front of the field. But Marco Mure can't quite do enough to get pole position. You get the feeling that it won't even matter at this point though because with over five minutes to go, just think about how much this track is going to improve and how much faster these guys are actually going to go a little bit later on. I'm quite fearful for some of these guys at the front of the field. If you just don't say, oh, as off the road goes uh, Filippo Mure. Mure uh, yeah, he's uh, going for a spin, I'm afraid, but Leo Notoki is improving, I believe, anyway, in the BMW right now. So it looks like he's on course to take back provisional pole position. He was out of it momentarily. It looks like he's going straight back to the front, though. He does oh. indeed. It's a 21-8, and he's in front by a tenth and a half. You know what? That could have been even quicker from Leonel Tocchi. We've now the track has now gone too fast. Track temperature is now increasing, um, and we've uh, got the top 36 covered by 1.3 seconds. And um, looks like there's a lot of love for the unicorns of love. Good. Uh, hello, also to uh, to Jess, one of our commentary team. She's watching along. Malik Mahmoud from All In Racing goes P25. Eamon Murphy from Yaz Heat, Richard Mille. Uh, currently third in the championship on 84 points. Marco Mure has decided to return to garage in the meantime. Murphy comes across towards the stripe, does not improve. Uh, Rasmus Christensen for Pulse Sim Sports in that very brightly coloured uh, highlighter esque uh, Aston Martin V8 Vantage. Currently 31st at the moment, but Leon Otoki is the one that they've all got to beat. Uh, and St and Christensen from Pulse Simsport, that's a hell of a lap, goes equal with Fabian Pifay from Team Fordzilla Lexus, Martin Schumacher. Now that's two BMWs in the top 10. And now the 411, uh, it, 411 is coming across towards the line. He's behind Leon Otoki and is gunning for the front row, goes P6. One minute 22.0 uh, on that one. And uh, Darren King, who's currently in P8, is three tenths off. He's about to go across towards the line. Goes P2, 93 thousandths. It is a BMW Aston front row. Malik, and uh, it is all changing. And we've just had that the number 27 Ferrari of Amos Lorito in the 27. That's the Jean Alesi Esports Academy Ferrari. Uh, I, I, I think, um, you know what, the thing is, is that from not just me and you and trying to keep up with this, Michael Hamlet's trying to keep up with this, and Mike Yow, our broadcast director, also trying to keep up with this. This is the most frantic qualifying session we've had so far. It's probably the shortest track on the calendar. This is absolutely brilliantly done. But Mirko Ferrari looking at pole position. The, and if Alexis puts it on pole, I won't be at all surprised. He goes P6, 0.177 and off. Drops Pife down a position as oh, Alberto Garcia, the championship leader, is spinning in qualifying. Yellow flags out towards the corkscrew, and Florian Becker in the 911 looking at possibly going for pole position. What will the Porsche have to say about the matter? They go P12, 0.225, level on time with the 995 McLaren. That's the ambassadors for, uh, by Renvald and and this is just Pret in the 17th has gone P4. Marco Mure's dropped down into seventh position. This is absolutely crazy. We've still got a minute and 50 to go in this session, Ewan. No one is going to be able to predict what the outcome of this is. But at the moment, Leon Otoki is still at the top of the timesheets. Yeah, it's absolutely impossible to keep up with at the moment. Everybody who's coming over the line is in improving and uh, pushing everybody else down so yeah it's just crazy and you can see the traffic as well which is starting to affect a few and it's getting very very busy out there we expected this is a very very short circuit and finding your space crucial but it's also very difficult Eichhorn gets up into 17th position Azima Murphy is pushed down to 15th he's not really improving out there at the moment and that's not great for the third place team in the championship but uh, Odox Motorsport are not, oh it's the go to the front Mirko Ferrari in Alexis oh. goes to the front with a 21.7 he's 12 thousandths in front at the moment I believe there's another couple of times coming through that may well see them steal the lead Marco Mure also comes over the line we've got Italians first and third as they're all improving and it's impossible to know where to look next as Becker goes into third as well.
Oh my goodness me, that is five different brands represented in the top five. This is the most ridiculously epic qualifying I've ever been a part of here on the Sim Grid. And, um, you know, like with 36 cars covered by 1.3 sex seconds, uh, Fede Christoph uh, in the uh, in the number 80 Aston Martin, the uh, we, we haven't had a lap time from the 991 virtual uh, on the uh, on the virtual by TX3901 car, but P10 looks to be uh, upping the ante as well. We're into the final 10 seconds of qualification. That's how excited we are because I'm tripping over my own words. Fede Christoph doesn't improve, Michele Nerby. Uh, now gunning towards the front, he's going to be the last one to cross the line. Well, first one to cross the line goes provisional pole 121 79. Shetalov goes through second by three one hundredths. Ah, oh, in the words of John McEnroe, you cannot be serious. Oliveira from Kings of La Asphalt have just invalidated their final lap. Lidner uh, 16th to town. Uh, down in 21st, Marco Bischoff has been at the sharp end through this qualifying session. And what's more, we are not over and done with quite yet because there are a lot of cars out on the circuit. Leon Otoki has uh, called time, but still a respectable P4. Fifth, uh, fifth covering the top five are covered by just over a tenth. Marco Bischoff in the 995 Ambassadors for Renvelt and McLaren heads across the stripe P11. And that's just under a quarter of a second uh, from Michele Nerbe, but uh, Fabian Pifei, seven as, we, as he's more commonly known, is dropping a little bit of time in the Team Fortilla Lexus car, but they're going to head through into t uh, into Rainey's, uh, into turn 10 now as well, into the final left hand at turn 11 at this 2.238 mile uh, road course here. So Pifei, can he improve? Can he get a little bit higher up the top 10? Across the line he goes P7, exactly a tenth and a half. Um, I think probably what I can't, I what Michael Hamlet has just said, I can't actually repeat. <laughs> um, in my areas, but like literally, I don't think we've had ever a more frantic qualifying session here on the Sim Grid, and with 36 cars, I kid you not, you went covered by just over a second. Wow. Yeah, that was quite incredible, really. And, uh, yeah, well, well, I doubt we'll see anything like that ever again because it was quite remarkable. I don't think some people want to see that ever again. It was truly frantic <laughs> and uh, it was uh, it was quite stressful, I'd imagine, for people involved as well. But uh, Nerby in the end taking pole position. Interesting to note for this championship as well, the 41 in second place. Great qualifying from those guys, but their two rivals, Yas Heat and Odox Motorsport, qualified in 18th and 20th. They're both down the order. Admittedly, they're only three tenths off the pace. It's not as if they're running out of pace by any stretch of the imagination. However, they are going to be stuck in a lot more traffic than the larger sport car is going to be in the early part of this race. It is a fairly long race, and there is time for you to make your way through the field if you are down here, for example, um, like uh, some of them are. But, you know, if you had the choice, you'd rather not start in the midfield because that is where the craziness can happen into Turn 1. And this uh, Turn 1 is known for Lap 1 incidents, particularly. It's a very, very tight corner, and so you'd rather not be in the midfield. I think I'm going to make a really good point, and I, I, I think this is brilliant from Chuck Wagon. This is the amount of banter we have here on the Sim Grid. He said that quality was tighter than Ebenezer Scrooge at Christmas. Um, and that was true. I mean, 36 cars covered by exactly... 1.053 seconds here at Laguna Seca. Don't forget, if you haven't already, you can follow us on the respective social media channels. Uh, the Sim Grid on Facebook, Sim underscore Grid on uh, Twitter, and The Sim Grid on Instagram. Uh, plenty of really, really good things coming up here on The Sim Grid over the month of June. We've got the next round of uh, more female races by Thrustmaster Rockets. We've also got the next round of the T, uh, the the Sim Grid VCO World Cup, the 12 Hours of Donington, uh, which will take place in the last week of June. But we are going to be waiting very, very soon uh, for what pract what we will see for the three hours. Um, but Ewan, that qualifying session really has put pay i mean i said in the introduction that what was shaping up to be no it is going to be an epic race because as uh, i think when Rene Sivert said yeah 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 we're not too sure about the bmw but leon is a really good driver leon showed that in quality he was at the sharp end of the grid he's qualified that bmw uh on row on row two in p4 
I think that's a good showcase that the championship is not quite decided yet. No, I don't, I don't think so. There's still three rounds to go, uh, of course, including this one. So there is certainly a lot of points available, um, but uh, they really do need to start getting podiums if they want to be involved. Um, the, the best BMW in the championship standings at the moment is in 11th, the 411 car. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's a, a little bit further down. It's at GC Racing and Friends, by the way, with Martin Schumacher qualifying that car here today. Um, they're a little bit down. The, you know, they've got to Unicorns of Love in 17th position in the championship. That's the car you're talking about there with the Leon Otoki, who, who uh, qualified that car. So they're not out of the equ uh, equation, certainly, but it, it's, it, it's going to be difficult for anybody outside of that top three or four um, to really make a challenge at this one. I think if, you know, things stay as they are, Lord of Sport are going to really extend or take the championship lead and really extend it at this point because you know Yassi and uh, Odex Motorsport are really quite a long way behind at this point but uh, you know it's a long race as, as you mentioned and it's still a fairly long season you know you've got nine hours of Paul Ricard coming up um, in July um, so that's going to be a long race and that's going to be an important race as well for anybody who wants to win the championship but also the final race at Misano is going to be equally as important so um, yeah there's still a long way to go in this season and uh, yeah the qualifying there is not the be all and end all of what's going to happen throughout the race yeah exactly in endurance racing it's not always about where you start it's where you finish when the checkered flag falls and that's what we're going to see here on round three the halfway points of season three of the endurance cup by thrustmaster here on the sim grid don't forget if you do want to take uh, advantage of the affiliate deal with expressvpn so sign up to a 12-month contract Get your additional three months expressvpn.com forward slash the sim grid that is for your three month affiliate deal uh, also you can uh, head to the official simsock website uh, to get your hands on some really really great technology based socks which provides uh you know the fact that you'll have grips underneath both heel and toe and also as you can see on your screens there uh david christie made a very good point about that on the previous uh, round uh, last time out at Monza and he says that I'd rather have something that's going to be comfortable and that my feet aren't sliding all, all over the place they're they're custom built uh, they've been developed with uh, they've de been developed by sim racers for sim racers so that just shows how expansive the community has gotten when it's come to technology uh, along with uh, say things such as any Thrustmaster uh, equipment that you might have uh, when you're actually racing on Assetto Corsa Competizione as well so we are waiting very very shortly to hopefully go green um but ewan you mentioned earlier on you hate this driver uh, you hate this track as a driver sorry um but out of the corners here where are the most pre predominant overtaking opportunities i know the corkscrew if you want to do a, st uh, a, a stoner versus rossi you've got to have big stones to do that well, yeah, absolutely. It's not the most obvious overtaking manoeuvre, really. But if, you know, we're having a fight on the last lap and things are getting right to, uh, or, or very, very close and, you know, people getting a bit desperate, then you might take a lunge on the last lap. But I wouldn't advise it, certainly, um, in the early part of this race. Turn one is the slam dunk one, really, for me. Or turn two, I guess, as it is, because that turn, that kind of kink on the straight is kind of turn one, isn't it, isn't it really? But whatever. The, the hairpin... Um, at the very early part of the lap is going to be the main one really um, you know you've got that slipstream down the front straight and then a, a diving break breaking zone down here which makes the breaking zone a little bit longer than it otherwise might be because it does plunge downhill as you can see there the elevation is quite severe um, and it does change quite a lot um, so uh, yeah that's a, that's a good overtaking opportunity there are, are a couple more uh, along the way maybe you can have a couple of dives in a few places but most of the corners around here are quite flowing and uh, you know the, the consequences for a mistake are quite big, so uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's it's not great for overtaking sometimes this circuit. But um, you know this this field is so close that I feel like we are going to see uh, a, a lot of racing. The strategy is going to be very very important around here, I would imagine anyway, um, because of the how difficult it is to overtake. If you've not got good straight line speed in that car, then you are going to find it very very difficult indeed. Um, so uh, you know you do need to have good strategy around here to make those kind of moves because as I mentioned this track is very very flowing and doesn't suit kind of dives that you're talking about there at many corners yeah indeed so uh, yeah I mean we, we'll, we'll very soon hopefully uh, go to the uh, starting grid but I think we've got a driver that we're going to speak to from GTWR and it is our pole position 
So, Michele Nervi joins us. Michele, uh, firstly, congratulations. Uh, that was a very, very interesting and uh, close qualifying. Hello. Yes, uh, I try my best. Uh, in the in the first uh, time of the qualify, uh, I don't have a good feeling, but uh, the last time I, I set my best lap and uh, I'm happy and now see the race. So that gives you a very clean run into the Andretti hairpin at turn two. How is the feeling in the team with uh, you and uh, Mr Romagnoli uh, today for the third round? Uh, with uh, with pace on the race, I mean, uh, we are good. And uh, let's see. Well, Michele, we wish you both the very best of luck for round three of the season. Thank you. Okay, big thank you to Michele Nerbi from the 28 GTWR car. Uh, let's bring in another driver. We spoke to uh, one of his compatriots at the Unicorns of Love. Let's bring in Leon Otoki. So, uh, good to have uh, Leon with us. Uh, Leon, uh, we spoke with René a bit earlier on uh, that the, the BMW they felt was going to struggle, but you literally started fighting for, for, for pole position quite early. Um, how are things feeling now that you guys have put it on P4 for the race? It's way more pressure than I expected to have. I uh, expected to be about P15 or 14. Um, I actually do struggle with the car a bit. It was more lucky that I hit that uh, hit that lap. And yeah, it's now just uh, don't crash and see where we're going to land. I think one of the biggest um, uh, talking points, obviously, with such a big and mixed grid is to always keep it uh, towards the front or towards the back because if you're in the middle of the pack it can sometimes cause problems but I think um, both you, René and Niels must be thinking you know what, we've got a chance here we've got a chance of getting better than a top 10 Yeah, we do um, but we don't really fight for the win so as actually we fight for the win but uh, it's not our main goal our main goal is to be top 10 and we're by now safely in it and we just try to, to get that. Well, Leon, we wish you, René and Niels, all the very best of luck for the race today here at the Endurance Cup by Thrustmaster. Thank you. So good to catch up with Michele Nerbi and Leon Otoki. And, um, you know, quite interesting to to hear the two different, uh, two different um, viewpoints from both drivers there, Ewan. Yeah, absolutely. On uh, on what what they thought about the qualifying. I mean, McKelly Nerby's thoughts are going to be pretty obvious about getting pole position. You know, he's not going to be displeased, is he? Um, but you know, it's good to hear it from him. Um, and uh, interesting also to hear that he didn't have a great feeling initially in that uh, in that qualifying session. I think that's very interesting how that developed uh, throughout the session. Maybe as the track got faster, he got more comfortable. Um, with the car, with the, with the way that the track was changing in the end, I'm not entirely sure really, um, but uh, but yeah, no, it's, it certainly worked out very very well uh, for them, uh, and, and not a bad qualifying performance there from Lee and Toki even to get fourth place uh, for the Unicorns of Love uh, team. That's uh, uh, that's a good qualifying position uh, for those guys as well. They're right up there, out of trouble as well. Um, so uh, yeah, they're, 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 they've they've done themselves a favour really because, as I mentioned, turn two for the first lap is going to be absolute pandemonium, especially down um, the, down the order. You know, there's 36 cars on the grid. They're all within a second of each other on pace, and they're all barreling barreling down into that hairpin all at once. I can't imagine everybody is going to get out of there unscathed. So. Being right up there inside the top four like those two are is very, very useful indeed. Even if, in Leon Otoki's case, they didn't actually get pole position, it doesn't really matter. They're out of trouble. Exactly, because in the mid-pack is where the majority of the trouble tends to happen. We have seen that multiple times on various events here on the sim grid, but it is about keeping it all nice and clean going into the Andretti hairpin. Turn two out of 11 here on the circuit. The corkscrew... They're going to have to circumnavigate that with 
really much uh, very good 2020 vision, spatial awareness, and also clinical precision. And that is what you need around a circuit like this. Uh, so the remainder of the calendar for Endurance Cup Season 3 by Thrustmaster will head to Le Castellet, Paul Ricard for the nine hours for the fourth and penultimate round on July 3rd. And then Misano, World Circuit, Marco Simoncelli hosts the final round, the fifth and final round, are, and that's the three hour round uh, on July 24th. Um, so uh, what we'll do is uh, we're gonna go to a quick commercial break. We'll be back with you in just a couple of moments time ahead of the start of the three hours of Laguna Seca here on the SimGrid. Welcome back to the SimGrid and for the midway point of Season 3 of the Endurance Cup by Thrustmaster with Alex Goldschmidt and Euron O'Leary, your commentary team throughout today's proceedings. And Ewan, I've just had a look back at how close the qualifying was between first and second at Monza. Um, it was actually 35,000, so we've slightly pipped them this time here at Laguna Seca, but I think... Um, you know, there was a bit of a conversation bet between myself and Michael Hamlet, the, the, the SimGrid Oracle. Like, we were just talking about how close things have been in qualifying. I mean, it was even closer in Monza last time out. But still, to have that amount of drivers, 36 covered by a second, after a 20-minute qualifying session around a 2.238-mile road course, it's pretty impressive, wouldn't you say? It is very impressive indeed, yeah, to see uh, how close it was. I mean... We, we, as, you, as you mentioned, it was slightly closer in Monza as an overall kind of uh, as an overall kind of thing with the field. 
Um, but uh, but I'm still very impressive around here, uh, even though it is a short circuit. It's a very, very tricky one, and there's lots of places where you can lose and gain time, um, which makes uh, that margin even more, uh, even the more impressive, um, considering that. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a difficult race for all these guys. Staying on the circuit is difficult, because, as I mentioned, there are so many corners where you can get tripped up. There's sand on the exits everywhere here. It's not tarmacs everywhere until you get to the barriers. It's sand and then wall. You need to keep it out of the sand and then out of the walls. And uh, you'll get a good place here today. But uh, it's going to be very, very congested indeed. 36 cars for this circuit is not very many really. Uh, so it's going to get very stretched out early on. And when we reach the traffic for the first time, it's pretty much going to be constant cars. From If you were sat at a corner, for example... You'd see cars constantly, pretty much, um, around this circuit because it's very short and there's just so many cars that it's going to make this race exceptionally exciting, I would hope. Yes, back marker traffic will play into this three-hour race rather early, probably within the first around about 20 to 30 minutes, depending on what happens in the first four to five laps here around this this particular circuit so it will be a case of finding out who is going to go for it in the first lap who's going to be those that are, uh, are going to say well you know what i've got everything to gain i've got nothing to lose that sometimes can spell a little bit of danger for the rest of the competition especially when you're going through into the andretti hairpin so we are now going to hopefully head to the formation well to the grid at the circuit here ahead of the three hours of Laguna Seca 180 minutes of racing and with 36 cars covered by a fraction over a second there they are the sunshine beaming down on the circuit here 20 degrees track temperature track is very much green so with regards to your grid um, you're gonna see the fact that um, quite a few are in position all ready to go so it's going to be romagnoli for the 28 gtwr racing team Igor ogorodikov goes in for the 41 lada sport rosneft and then it is the 446 of sfr italia's mirko ferrari and leonor toki from unicorns of love and the number 14 bmw that is the first two rows good to see the 911 GTRC endurance team that's got Jano Kauch behind the wheel in the Porsche and then they've got the 32 GTWR RHG Academies Thibaut Props alongside Fabian P. Fay from Team Fordzilla Lexus and uh, the Coach Dave Academy car will have Jan Villen van Owen behind the wheel then the Kings of Asphalt Max and Oil Ferrari will be ninth and that will be alongside with the number 17 Team Fordzilla APM of Antoine Fleury and we've got Amos Florito and Jonas van Droyten in the number 27 John Alessi Esports Academy car and the ambassadors for Renvald to McLaren. Then we've got uh, the number 52, that is Pulse Sim Sports. Rasmus Christensen will have Martin Schumacher, no relation to Michael or Ralph there, in the 411 BMW, the GC Racing and Friends crew. Then you've got the number 53, Leipert Esports, Marcus Eichhorn in the... Uh, in the Aston Martin and then it is the number 100 of Good Time Racing's Bastian Lindner uh, behind the wheel then it's uh, the 192 uh, Porsche that's in 17th position that is Marco Macri in the Porsche and we'll have the number 149 that is Yaz Heat Richard Mills Eamon Murphy partnered with Yanislav Honsik they're currently third in the championship and they're down in 18th position another surprise here as well the 111 DC Sim Racing NL Menno van der Molen will be uh will have uh Garcia from Odox Motorsport in the 121 alongside you've got Dreyer in the 73 Vedi in the triple three and Le Hanaf, uh in the number seven car uh you can see there's a couple of spaces uh not being occupied there but there's one uh, Mercedes Rice at the very back on its lonesome flashing away uh with their uh, so uh, quite a few drivers ready to go racing here at the uh, three hours of Laguna Seca. They are formed up and we have just over a minute and 40 seconds to go until a full formation lap. The track being very green at the moment, Ewan, it's going to cause some slight issues. I think especially we're trying to get brake and tyre temp into the cars ready for racing this afternoon. 
Yeah, it's going to be very, very different to what we just had in qualifying, but luckily for these guys, some of them have changed driver, we believe anyway. Um, uh, uh, both of the guys on the front row have changed drivers. It's uh, Roman Yoli and uh, Ogorodnikov now who are going to be starting those cars, and I think that's a good idea, really. It's, it, it, it makes it... it, makes it Okay, I've just been corrected by the way. It might not actually be those two. Um, so we'll wait for them to get underway, and then we'll and then I'll make that comment. But still, I think it's a good idea to change drivers because the conditions are not going to be the same, are they? From what we saw in qualifying. Um, so uh, you know, it, uh, and having your qualifying head and your race head on is, I think, is a difficult mindset to switch in such quick succession. So um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. We'll wait and see what to, what which drivers are going to take the start here at this point, um, but uh, some may opt for keeping the same driver in, some may opt for um, you know, swapping out their driver, I think it'd be a good idea, personally, but uh, it, you know, it just depends how much this track has changed and how much it is going to change throughout this race, that's always the key uh, with these races, how much is the track going to change, who adapts to it well, less apparent over a 3 hour race but that it would be over a 24 for example, but it's still going to be very very important to nail each track condition. Yeah, so from 24th to 36th, the teams that will be in the respective order are as follows. After the number seven, that is the virtual drivers by TX3. Number seven, uh, Mercedes, it will be the number 34 Lamborghini of the Greek Souvlaki squad. Then TF Racing, as they're now getting things underway with the uh, formation lap. The 106 Bentley of Omega E Racing team. Uh, they will start 26, the head of the 194 Racing Line Motorsport 194 Mercedes. Then it's the 166 Beetle Sim Racing uh, .de, uh, Mercedes. Then it's the 88 Lexus of All In Racing. The number 72 McLaren of XL Racing by Renvald and Red, which is Tom Heyer and Dominic Schneider. That's that pairing there. The number 10 Bentley, that is Deep Purple. Uh, the like uh, with uh, the likes of Chris Severe, Kieran Prendergast, and Kevin Niles piloting that chariot. The number 99 Porsche, Lutz Motorsport, uh, Felix Diepers, Fabian Otten, and Till Jorinsen. Uh, then you've got the 195 uh, car showing up there as well. The 349 VRM Racing Lexus, the 217 Desperate Measures Bentley, the number 80 GTR Masters HU Endurance Team. Uh, rounding out the 36 strong but um, it's going to be GTWR that will lead the field into the rolling start formation they're now heading up the hill towards the left hander at turn six that will bring them onto the Ray Hall straight and, uh, a nice shot from the bridge just uh, overlooking this part of the circuit and you can just get a sense here Ewan of the elevation changes as you head up towards the corkscrew yeah, you can indeed. It's a very, very undulating circuit, and that's what makes it one of the most challenging, one of the most enjoyable for some drivers um, to, to actually race on here. Here's another example of the elevation change as well. Michael Romagnoli is going to be starting that car, by the way, but um, the, the Lada Sport 41 is not going to be changed. And one more note as well on that GTWR car that is in front. You know, they're one of the very, very best teams, and it, they, they came second in the second season of the Endurance Cup um, as, as a team. But uh, they're not doing the best in terms of that actual car is not actually their best placed uh, team car, if you see what I mean. They haven't even got a top 20 so far this season. They're putting themselves right in the conversation for even possibly more than a top 10 here today. We'll wait and see. Indeed. So Romagnoli waits for Sheratilov, who has actually gotten into the car. And then it's Mikko Ferrari and Leon Otoki. That's the top two rows. As we wait with bated breath, we... Brace ourselves to what is going to happen in the next 30 or so seconds. It's a bit of a long drag coming out of turn 11, heading towards the start finish line. And then when we get the signal, it will be time to get the midway points of Insurance Cup Season 3 by Thrustmaster underway. Green, green, green. We are off and racing. And Romagnoli gets the jump on Sheratolov with Ferrari looking up the inside, going into the Andretti hairpin. Florian Becker up the inside of Leon Otoki going through in for the first time. And it's nearly it's three abreast at some points. But everyone seems to have cleanly made it through so far. And I emphasise those words so far at this particular moment inside because they've now gone through turn three as this is the easier part of this race. It was all about keeping it clean because now everyone knows that the fight for the title is well and truly on. 
Uh, Yaroslav Honsik, Jardier, up into 15th position as the Yaz Heat Marina car started down in 18th. So a good game there by Honsik as there's a move for the lead. Ladislav Rosnev hit the front. Mistake there from Romagnoli going through turn six as they head their way through into the corkscrew for the first time. Neat and tight on the apexes. Make sure you break correctly as Marco Muri goes up the inside. I think has made the move on Leon Otoki. And now here comes, that is the 66 of uh, Le Filet in the, uh, in the team Fordzilla Lexus. Ot Otoki's trying to fight back, but the BMW is not wanting to assist. And then you've got Oliveira in the 35 just behind. But Otoki dive bombs up the inside of the 66 Lexus through turn 11. But the Lexus has the run on the BMW. 5.4 litre naturally aspirated V8 versus 4.4 litre twin turbo M Power V8 engine. As Otoki gets trying to go up the inside through turn two. Gets a nice little switch back there. But it's getting a little bit messier at the back. Amos Lorito is uh, battling away through the field and is looking to close up on the 995 of Michael Bischoff for ambassadors for Henfelton. But still at the moment, Ewan, it has been pretty orderly for the last, for the first uh, couple of moments. It has been very, very clean so far, and that is uh, good to see, certainly, uh, that everybody is still in this race and still in contention, still right up there at the moment. But not a great lap one from Romagnoli, not, maybe not quite up to speed as some of the guys around him. The largest sport Rosneft car is now into the lead. It was a, they got a great exit um, off of turn number five, which really set them up inside into turn six. It's not normally a space you really want to be making a move, but if you're right alongside like that, then you can make it work. Roman only tried to go around the outside, but actually got pushed wide and then lost another place. He's down to third place now, but uh, that's all sorted itself out inside the top five. The gaps are fairly large and nearly a second already, but further back, stuff like this is going on. Uh, where it's just battling all over. And that's the Odex Motorsport car, by the way, just in behind that battle. They were trying to get involved. Just uh, getting involved right now is Bischoff in 10th place, or at least defending his place in that McLaren, trying to uh, make up some uh, positions as well at the same time, attacking and defending all at once. Yes, indeed. Almas Lorito battling away with Martin Schumacher. Oh. And uh, oh. there's Marco Macri, and oh, that is the number 17 Fleury. Oh, the John Alacy Esports and Ambassador for Envelton car have come together through turn two. And now it's all gonna. Yeah, that's very, yeah, that's very much the right word there, you and uh, <laughs> careful indeed. But the thing, the thing is, I'd like to see if we can get a replay of that as to what exactly happened. But I think that might have been that uh, Lorito might have gotten up the inside oh. of uh, Bischoff there so close between all of these guys people jinking everywhere trying to make up places and that was a bit messy down into turn two we'll try and get a replay for you uh, to see what happened but goodness me it's getting all very very packed up in the midfield and you can see the gap between seventh and eighth right now you can see where that has happened and uh, it, you can see that the gap has opened up now and it's all stacking up behind as well so it's all really really um, close in the, in the back right now with Honzik at the front of this train. He's got himself up into ninth place. He's been a fantastic start from him, but uh, he's now at the head of this train and he's in uh, a bit of madness, really, because this has all just kicked off in the last lap or so. And I'm afraid a fair amount of cars will have got damage out of that altercation as well. Yes, indeed. And they'll probably have to uh, limp around the circuit with an additional bit of damage. But that's part and parcel of endurance racing. The first thing that you're not going to do is uh, sacrifice your position to uh, try and get the car faster but some teams will do that they'll have an alternative strategy if that get if that is required Marco Macri in the number 13 in the number 192 car uh, which started down in 17th position now up into P13 chasing down good time racing's Bastian Lindner who is behind the number 35 Ferrari and that is the kings of asphalt uh, Max Honor, Vinny Oliveira, partnered with uh, Daniel Di Oliveira. Martin Schumacher is battling away now with uh, Yaroslav Honsik. This is the battle for P9, and they are 2.8 seconds behind Darren King in the uh, Coach Dave Academy Triple Eight Aston Martin. Threw into the corkscrew was ah uh, now that was very close indeed that Lynn nearly got onto the back bumper of Oliveira going into the corkscrew. That could have been rather messy rather quick quickly. 
but uh, Marco Macri has gotten away from the 121 that is Garcia from Odox Motorsport we ride on board now with Bastian Lindner uh, in the 100 good time racing Audi and you can now see that effectively here Ewan Yanislav Honsik has become the cork in the bottle he has indeed not really by any fault of his own but the fact that those incidents actually took place here a couple of laps ago right where we're going towards right now into the hairpin meant that a real gap opened up to the top eight or so and, and Honzik really not able to close that down because he's being hounded from behind by Schumacher as now a battle going on oh a little bit of a push um, from uh, van der Molen and uh, Bischoff was uh, losing well trying not to lose any more places because uh, Duterme was right behind him as well in that Nissan and you don't really want to have an argument with that car because it is massive and it will steam down your inside if you're not careful uh, so it is to, to just do that and be a little bit careful the side by side continues on up towards turn six not a place where you want to go side by side but they're going to try anyway bit of a touch on the way in it looks like the Porsche in the background McCree is going to try and get both of them or at least one up into the corkscrew look at this from above going into the most famous corner on the circuit it all slows up and you can see them on the apex there almost coming to a complete standstill because the cars are getting stacked up on top of each other so much and having to check up so much that uh, they're almost coming to a complete standstill uh, around the court on that occasion they get away with it but uh, these battles now are getting very very feisty indeed and they're, they're, oh, uh, in the background it's getting even more physical look at that a couple of cars into the sand yeah well the words elbows out are pretty much a big understatement of what's happening right here uh, we're into the first seven and a half minutes of this race race three out of five for the third season the endurance cup by thrustmaster leon otoki is effectively the meat in the sandwich at the moment between marco Mure and the 66 of jeremy le filet from team fordzilla lexus this is the battle for six and for fifth sixth and seventh florian becker is a little bit further up the road but uh Sheratolov for the 41 Lada Sport Rosnev crew is leading Mirko Ferrari from SFR Italia by now what is 1.7 seconds we're on lap number six of this race and Leon Otoki doing a very good job just soaking up the pressure a little bit like the sponge but Lefile is about 1.6 seconds so the BMW doesn't have to really worry about it and then uh, you've got uh, Jeremy Lefile uh, for Team Fordzilla Lexus. Then it's the Triple Eight of the uh, Coach Dave Academy car with Darren King behind the wheel. And there's Giuseppe Montalbano in the 106 Bentley Omega E Racing Team, partnered with uh, Fran uh, Francesco Peraglini and uh, Davide Branchini in that car. They're now up into 16th position. Closing on the 52 of Rasmus Christensen from Pulse Simsport in the Aston Martin. And then uh, just up ahead, they've got the 121 of Alberto Garcia uh, in the Audi, uh, who is about 0.8 of a second uh, ahead. Well, actually, those gaps seem to be closing hand over fist because they're right into this battle with the likes of Oliveira Lindner. All bit of a run wide coming out of turn two from Montalbano heading into the right hander at three. And Lehenaf uh, is closing. Uh, Ludovic Lehenaf from Virtual Races, uh, Virtual Drivers by TX3. And at the moment, uh, 20 cars covered by 21.2 seconds. As it looked like there was a, a potential opportunity for an overtake, courtesy of uh, Marco Bischoff in the 995 Ambassadors for Henvelton car on the 111 DC Sim Racing NL. Uh, that's the old Dutch crew, uh, Menno van der Molen, uh, in the triple one. And they were covered by just over two tenths of a second as they filtered their way through into the corkscrew once again. But uh, Montalbano heading, uh, ha uh, staying ahead of uh, Le Hanaf at this particular moment. But at the minute, Schoenertelhoff uh, has got a lead of two seconds over Mirko Ferrari for the lead as we now hit the first ten minutes covered. We have indeed the 31 has just been for a spin at uh, the corkscrew there by the way TF Racing uh, just having a, a small 360 but they're back going again uh, in what is not actually la last place because uh, Amas Larito has also been into the pit lane and is still there 
um, for the number 27 team. They're actually out again now. Um, he's sharing a car with Martin Darlin, by the way, but they're down in dead last position. Let's have a little look at the replay as to what happened down here into turn two. This is the 35 car going a little bit deep. The 888 trying to take advantage, and I'm afraid that wasn't smart driving from the Aston Martin there at all, sticking his nose down the inside. Just needed a little bit of patience, needed to hold back for just a moment, and that would have sorted itself out, and that completely kicked off a whole load of chaos behind him at the time. Yeah, that was the 995 uh, McLaren Ambassadors for Henvalt and, and also the Jean Lacy Esports car uh, as well uh, that got caught up in all of that. So it literally it caused a domino rally effect as Darren King now uh, closing in on Team Fordzilla Lexus's Jeremy Lefile. This is the seventh position. They're two and a half seconds behind Leon Otoki who put the number 14 Unicorns of Love BMW M6 GT3 on the outside of the second row. Uh, but the uh, number 14 still currently sitting in sixth position. 0.5 of a second off of the 32. That is GTWR uh, RHG Academy's uh, number one car Marco, oh. with Marco Muro behind the wheel. As That was very close between King and uh, Lefile there, I must admit there, Ewan. Was uh, dips to a wheel onto the sand there uh, on the uh, on the right on the left hand side, excuse me, from Darren King, and uh, did a good save, but uh, not the ideal way to go through uh, turn four. Certainly, as we go back a little bit further um, to a battle going on for thirty second place overall between Bentley and uh, one of the Hondas. Uh, speaking of a uh, Honda, by the way, I just wanted to mention in fourth place. Um, at the moment, it, sorry, the, the best Ren Velton car in, in the championship, sixth place right now, but not having uh, the greatest race in the Honda. I've not seen a Honda up towards the front, is what I'm trying to say, uh, up, up either in qualifying or the race. Um, so it doesn't seem to be a particularly strong track for them. Um, you know, so it's a bit of a shame to see, especially since that car is up there um, in the championship at the moment. But uh, these battles are not dying down anytime soon. You can see on the track map, especially in the midfield, basically down from 12th. Uh, really down all the way, well, well, take a pick really, It's it, it goes on right the way to the back of the field um, from 12 on back. The leaders have kind of escaped all this and they're now able to run away and get a big lead on the rest of the field but uh, you know if you're 12th place or worse off at this point then you really are being held back and unfortunately championship leaders Odox Motorsport are one of those being held back right now. Yeah, that's probably not a situation they wanted to see themselves in after qualifying where they qualif they rounded out the top 20. That's how close it was in this session for round three of the season. Tom Schneider in uh, what looks to be, that looks to be the only Honda on this grid. Uh, and looking back at where they were, they finished P6 at Monza, which is, uh, I, I think in some respects, with a six-hour race, you've got to also just map. You've just got to be consistent. You've got to be competent. You've also got to be precise. And especially with a track like Monza, you know, full throttle for well over seventy percent of the lap. There's Igor Zanella. You can actually see uh, Igor actually uh, on screen, as well as uh, on the screen in the car that he's driving at the moment. And that is the 193 Racing Line Motorsport Mercedes AMG GT3 Evo that is trying to close in on Mamad and also that is Fenny Christoph. So Fenny Christoph has had a good start to the race. They started down in 36th position. They now uh, have gained eight places in the last 14 and a bit minutes. You can just see how hard these drivers are wrestling with the cars, obviously with the force feedback as there's a bit of a switch back there from Chris Sever. Up the inside and already tags the back of Mamad and that nearly collects Christoph. That's coming through turn 11. Oh my goodness me, um, the hearts in the mouth moments will hit rather rapidly. Yeah, they're not stopping either. Two Bentleys going side by side into the hairpin and Zanella trying to watch on behind to see where he can get involved in this maybe, but uh, not really able to at the moment. Uh, Chris Siva there has just been displaced of 29th place, so uh, Zanella wasn't able to get through either. Schneider not too far behind in 32nd, that is the 73 car that is in 6th place in the championship at the moment by the way, and uh, they're currently at 48 points adrift already, even though they are in 6th place you know, this is not going to help them in any way, they need to get up the order if they want any chance at winning this championship let's not forget that team had a win last season at Imola, 
um, in season two they actually won a race uh, in in this championship but um, doesn't look like they're going to be able to do that uh, here at Laguna Seca that Honda really really struggling as we go up to our championship leader also struggling right now yeah well the thing is is that Leon Otoki uh, well at the now we've got some penalties coming through and there's been a warning given to car number 14 unicorns of love that has been warned for aggressive driving uh, with the uh, Team Fordzilla Lexus car is currently being part, uh, piloted by uh, Jeremy Lefilet. So just a warning, little slap on the wrist, no drive-through penalty for Leon Otoki there. But just so at least um, they've got to keep their eyeballs on Storks, and that's not just Leon Otoki, but also uh, his teammates René Sivert and uh, Niels Klinkmüller. Uh, in the Unicorns of Love squad, Alberto Garcia has piloted the 121 Odox Motorsport Audi up to what is now 13th and 20th. But there is a big old scrap, a big old melee. Ufella in the 934, Van der Molen in the 111, and then Eichhorn is uh, battling away with uh, De Havilland in the 349. That's the VRM racing car. Uh, and that's getting rather dicey. That's going into the corkscrew, guys. Oh, James de Havilanda sends it up the inside of oh, Ufella. No. As there's been a turnaround uh, just behind. So the likes of Van der Marlen off him, and it's caused absolute chaos behind. There is a yellow flag out at the moment, and that is at one of the points where you don't want that to happen. And I'm just keeping my eyes on the track map to see which car that is. That is the 111. The 111, Van der Molen oh, is Van der the Molen, one that sorry. lost out big time. Yeah, yeah, sorry, you're right. Van der Molen went around. Not, not push off. He was involved there in some capacity. He was in, in that battle. But that just got too many cars in too small of a space, didn't it, really? Um, going up towards the corkscrew. There just wasn't enough room for all of those cars to go side by side. But those two are battling a little bit further back. And the, the car on the inside trying to defend its place broke a little bit too late and went into the car in front of that so uh, that's always a danger that can happen um, when you're in those battles just focusing so much on the car beside you that you forget that there's ones in front if you break a little bit too late then you are going to rear end them that's exactly what happened there up towards the court screw and I'm afraid it's just put that triple one car a long long way down after a good run early on yeah that's a real real shame because they qualified 19th so pretty much halfway through the field it looked like there was a bit of a domino effect after we saw that move from uh, from the lexus a little bit earlier on but darren king uh getting a, a very close to track limits there coming out of turn 10 and has got jardier closing in so yaroslav honsik martin schumacher uh, bastian linda also closing in but here is a battle here for p5 Leon Otoki has got the, uh, the wind back in his sails in that BMW and he's closing on the number 32 GTWR R8 Academy car of Marco Mure as now we ride on board with Martin Schumacher in the 411 uh, GC Racing and Friends car running in the Valkenhorst Motorsport colours uh, Valkenhorst running Marco Wittmann in DTM this year um, but also, Valkenhorst very well known within their GT3 antics, but good to see that they've gone with a, a, a real nice motorsport livery. Uh, Honzik is just up ahead, but you can see how close it is between the three of these here, you and they're, they're close, but probably around about a second apart from King to Schumacher, but King, I think, just went a little bit wide going through turn six. Yeah, it looked like they're kicking up the sand ever so slightly in front of these guys. It looks like there's a couple of cars in front that have uh, maybe it closed things up a, a little bit as well with uh, Lefile who's uh, starting to lose a bit of time clearly in that Lexus and um, King is now right on the back of him but we're going to jump a little bit further back to this craziness that's going on in the midfield because it is very very entertaining a little bit wide goes Oliveira uh, through the rainy curve and now Marco McCree is trying to get involved maybe a dive at the hairpin but uh, Oliveira knew that was coming so he goes to the inside line it's going to be another cutback from the racing line motorsport car but there's Aston Martin of Christensen getting involved there which prevented him from doing quite what he intended to still going to be slipstream and a big overspeed down into turn one though into the hairpin once again a defense of the inside line from Oliveira is McCree going to be able to go right round the outside here I very much doubt it and he sticks behind for the moment yeah some good spatial awareness by both drivers there especially Marco Macri 
Uh, but just behind, you've got Montalbano and Lehanaf actually battling away. And Montalbano is ahead of Lehanaf. He's stayed ahead of Lehanaf. And now they're closing in on Mar Marco Macri. And there is Rasmus Christensen from Paul Simsport. Darren King still trying to close in on Jeremy Lefile. Yaroslav Honsik closing in too. And I'm just having a look at the lap times. Honzik was over two tenths quicker than King as he gets right up close and personal to the back bumper of the Triple Eight Coach Dave Academy car. He looked towards the inside, stuck his nose out going through Rainey's at turn nine. As now we ride on board with Ludovic Lehenaf in the number seven Mercedes from Virtual Drivers by TX3. That just gives you a real sense of, uh, uh, a real uh, hit on the senses of how difficult it is to get your way through the corkscrew. And then through into Rainey's, through into turn 10. Someone went wide. That might have been Macri, I believe, there. Left-hand side touching the dust, going through the exit of turn 10 as they come out of the final corner. And looking between Christiansen, Macri, Montalbano and Lehenaf, they're, they're covered by less than a second. Or maybe make that about 1.3. There's Simon Duterme, Darren King. There's uh, is We're back with them now, uh, along with... Uh, Martin Schumacher and Yaroslav Honsik. Bastian Linder is dropping a little bit behind. The Audi has just put in a purse, uh, has, has put in a pretty decent lap, nearly a tenth, a tenth of a second quicker, 123.0. But this is getting rather close between Honsik and Schumacher, and this is for ninth on the road. It is indeed, and Lindner's getting involved in this fight as well, actually. It, not lurking in the background in that Audi at Le Filet, starting to back up this train a little bit, although that gap has opened up to eight tenths in the last few moments to Darren King, who's still defending from the Yas Heat car, which is trying to gain some points quite desperately at the moment. Let's not forget they came in two points behind the championship leaders, um, and the likely championship leaders heading out of here at large, but Russ Neff will, will be extending their lead by a good distance at this point. So, uh, they do need to get some more points here, does Hodzik, but there's still a long way to go. Still a long season ahead, and uh, they'll be able to um, try and exploit that in the next few rounds. But, uh, but yeah, at the moment, he's just stuck behind the Aston Martin. It is difficult to get through here, so maybe sticking behind for now is the best choice. Save that tiny bit of fuel that might allow him to short fill slightly in the first pit stop to maybe get in front of the strategy, because, as I mentioned, uh, a little bit earlier on before we actually got into the race it's difficult to get through here um, especially when you're coming up against a car like the Aston Martin which is pretty strong in a straight line yeah just keeping uh, my eyes a little bit further down the order Conto Yanis in the number 34 Lamborghini from G Greek Suvlaki uh, they're now currently in 22nd position and uh, they started down in 24th as uh, Schumacher runs a little bit wide coming out of T6, up the Ray Hall straight, up the steep uh, incline, up towards the corkscrew, turn 7, 8 and 8A. Eight and you can just see the elevation change going down the hill through Rainey's and then into the right hander here at turn 10. And this is where it starts to level off uh, in terms as we ride on board on the uh, dash cam. For Martin Schumacher down the gearbox into first tight on the apex through turn 11 and this uh, train is constantly running at the same sort of speed that we have seen for the past few moments uh, 24 minutes completed so two hours 36 minutes and oh we've had a drive-through penalty now that is for Darren King I'm wondering if we might see what that is for whether that is going to be for track no. limits or probably for the instant I would imagine but uh, yeah I mean that's uh, a bit of an early blow for Darren King and the Coach Dave Academy crew there Ewan. It's for I'd imagine it's for the incident down the hairpin in the very first uh, few laps where uh, I think there was an Audi that went a little bit wide stuck in the nose down the inside but um, it wasn't really welcome there and uh, it went for a spin it caused that chaos that we saw uh, around laps two or three or, or, or something like we'll grab see on that three uh, it was indeed. Uh, award is forgiven to car 34 as well. We mentioned that a little bit uh, earlier on, but uh, yeah, there it is. Drive through penalty for the Aston Martin. And so uh, Diane King's going to have to come down pit lane in a few moments' time. So that's going to be uh, hurting him quite badly, really. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's going to send him down the order, going to send him into the traffic 
Uh, maybe not down this far, but it's a fairly long pit lane here at Laguna Seca, and uh, that is going to set him back a fair amount, and it's almost certainly going to put him in a big battle. Yeah, uh, I'm hearing that uh, Yaroslav Honsik Jardier will have to give two positions back to the cars behind. And uh, so it looks like Yaroslav Honsik will. So Yaroslav Honsik has been instructed to give back two positions gained by going off circuit. So from ninth down to 11th, that promotes Schumacher and Linda to run at the top 10. Uh, I just also heard that the Coach Dave Academy Triple Eight car has now appealed the penalty, hence why the drive-through at the moment has been rescinded. But then if that is something you can do on the Endurance Cup. You can actually uh, appeal a penalty during the race. I think there's only a certain amount of times you are able to do that. But um, that is why the drive-through penalty at the moment is being dispute is being appealed by the Triple Eight, so that is why they stay out at the moment. If that penalty is then reissued uh, through the uh, relevant uh, evidence that is given, then they will have to serve the penalty. Felix Diepers from Lutz Motorsport running with that. Um, look, reminds me of Sebastian Vettel's helmet at Ferrari with the, uh, the German flag strike down the middle, doesn't it? Just a bit. I was going to say it reminds me of a German football kit or something because it's all white and then, <laughs> the, the, you know, the, the small stripes. But anyway, uh, that could just be because football's on the brain a bit at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, 25th position at the moment for the 99 Porsche, doing uh, doing fairly well. Just a fairly nice livery. Uh, you know, very simple, but also quite nice at the same time. Uh, but we go up to the order just a little bit to the top five. Uh, Marco Mure and uh, Miko Mure, excuse me, and uh, Leon Otoki both uh, battling, battling away together. And Leon Otoki, let's not forget, had that warning a little bit earlier on for um, his conduct throughout the first half an hour of this race. Hopefully he keeps it a little bit cleaner throughout the rest of it, but um, we still have reached the point where we're going to reach traffic here. That's the point that, of this race where uh, that's going to really intrigue me, really. How are these guys going to cope with that? Because it's so difficult to negotiate traffic around here. And uh, you know, we've seen how difficult it is to overtake. It's not impossible, but it is hard. So how's the traffic going to affect these battles? I think it's going to have a really, really possibly race deciding effect on this one. It very well could do. And it's also dependent on how they play their respective strategies. And we don't know what the drivers are going to do, what they've decided between themselves. They'll all have an idea. They'll have a contingency plan. They'll always have a plan B, as Ludovic Lehenaf. Uh, still closing on Giuseppe Montalbano uh, from Omega E in the 106 Bentley. That's still the battle for 16th position. Marco Macri in the Porsche has not really gotten away from the duo. And then we've got the triple three uh, virtual drivers by TX3 AAA Esports Nissan, uh, not too far behind by about just under a second. As Lehenaf looking to go up the inside of Montalbano, thinks better of it going through into the Andretti hairpin. Two hours, 31 minutes and a half to go. Igor Zanella uh, gets alongside Fenech Kristoff. Uh, this is going to be for 28th position. Neatly done by the Mercedes driver. And then uh, the recovering Marco Bischoff from Ambassadors for Henvelton looks towards the outside and then has the desperate measures uh, Bentley. Uh, Sushchinov in the 217 uh, trying to get past and it looks like Lorito, I, I'm, I'm just trying to see if Lorito's uh, still out there at the moment, looks to be the case, but uh, it has been a race for some to forget, especially the 111 DC Sim Racing NL uh, McLaren, all the way down in 37th position, but uh, you can see uh, by the facial expressions on Igor Sanella uh, on his rig, um, that there is some extreme uh, images of concentration, but then also when he's talking to his teammates uh, on the uh, Discord server, that they've, they're, they're more than likely on. There's probably a bit of banter, but they're also motivating. They're telling him how his sector times are. So Igor is a bit tunnel vision at the moment, like every single driver on this grid at the moment. But uh, coming up to the first half hour in, um, Ewan, it's been... There's been some incidents. We've had some really, really close battles, but it's still unfolding uh, to that point, isn't it? 
Yeah, there's still lots of battles to be watching going on up and down the field at the moment, really, um, so, and many of them are undecided, like this one uh, that we're seeing right now. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's plenty of stuff to keep us entertained throughout the re rest of this race for the next two and a half hours, but the next uh, half an hour is going to be important because the first round of pit stops are going to be upon us before long, and uh, they are really going to decide this race. Strategy is going to decide this race. If you're in a train like this right now, maybe not, and Zanella, because he's not actually stuck behind anybody, but you know, if you're a few places back, like uh, Blotto maybe, who was right up there in qualifying, wasn't he, but he's found himself right in the back of the pack at the moment. If you're in one of these trades, you're stuck there, get in early, get in late, you know, do anything different maybe to try and get in front, and um, that's going to be the intrigue really over the next half an hour to 40 minutes. You know, what are these guys going to do? You've got to make two pit stops in this race, you're not going to make it to the end otherwise. Um, but when do you take them in, in regards to, or, or, or you know, in, in relation to everybody else? That's going to be very, very important. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, it's going to decide the race. It's going to decide the finishing positions between these kind of battles. Yeah. So the rules with regards to uh, stint times here on the uh, Endurance Cup by Thrustmaster. If it's a three-driver crew on a three-hour race. It's a maximum of uh, 90 minutes driving time, and then two drivers for three hour races, it's 135 minutes maximum driver time. So, for those uh, crews that do have a two driver setup, they can actually do it. So, some might decide to do now. Oh, now I've just spotted Rasmus Christensen in the Pulse Sim Sport car is dropping. Now, he was up in 17th position. I'm wondering if that is actually him that is, uh, they've just gone through because that car was running a little bit slowly towards the left-hand side. And Christensen was, uh, yeah, he's dropped down into 22nd position, so I'm not too sure if the Aston Martin had a little bit of a moment, let's say, and it looks like there was the case. Um, but uh, Shevratolov for the number 41 Lada Sport Rosneft crew, who now lead by nearly six and a half seconds, has just put in the fastest lap of the race on the previous two tours. A 122.5 last time around and then this time on the completion of lap 23. So, following on the unsuccessful appeal, the triple eight car, Coach David Academy, Aston Martin, will have to serve the drive-through penalty. So, it has been appealed, the appeal appealed, it has been rescinded and the penalty has been reinstated. Um, for Darren King, so he will have to serve that in three, within the next three laps. As uh, oh, Marco Macri has a massive wobble there that was coming out of turn four, and that has given the opportunity for Montalbano and Luhanaf uh, to actually get past. So Marco Macri drops from 13th to 15th. Uh, Alexander Suchinov from the Desperate Measures Bentley crew in the 217, still battling away with Fenik Kristoff in the number 80 GTR Masters HU uh, Hungary Endurance Team. Uh, they are battling away over what is 29th position with Igor Zanella in the 193 Racing Line Motorsport Mercedes starting to gallop away into the distance from the pair uh, as they now filter their way up towards the corkscrew hard on the brakes down the slight dip and then for down the roller coaster part of this circuit and you can just see that sometimes some get good traction coming out of it others don't there you and sometimes going through the corkscrew if you don't know that breaking point going into the first part of the corkscrew you can actually cause yourself a massive handling problem through the next two parts of it yeah absolutely they do kind of flow into one another really and uh, you do have to make sure you get it all right um, to uh, stay in, in your position, most importantly right now for these guys because uh, it is just so close at the moment. Anybody is there waiting to pick up the pieces really. So you, you do have to string them all together because if you give everybody else, uh, anybody else a sniff and uh, they're more than likely going to take it at this point. I'm not sure if that 888 car has taken its penalty yet. I didn't see. Um, but I'm just interested to find out where they come out really um, compared to everybody else. Uh, because it's the first drive through with the real front runners that we've seen. I think it, that car has been through the pit lane because I can't see it on the track map uh, up towards the front. It has indeed only dropped to 17th. I would expect it to drop down into the 20s or so, but you can see uh, by that red drop on your track map right now. He was in a small battle, a controllable battle. I think it was a quartet of cars, maybe a quintet of five. 
but now he's in the craziness of the midfield. This is uncontrollable. This situation, he is in a lot less control of this situation than what he was before. So it's a really, really costly mistake to be making so early on. And it really is going to have a, an effect on his whole race now. And it's not just his race as well, because the Endurance Cup has teams in there and it will have Jan Willem van Ommen and James Parker in that crew. So uh, it's now about damage limitation for Darren King as he's trying to close in and pass the number 349 VRM Racing Lexus of James de Havilland uh, just up ahead. And then there's Dutel. Macri is now dropping a little bit because he's been after that moment that the, mistake, the Porsche had earlier. Alexander Suchinov still trying to get past Fede Kristoff and Kristoff is uh, very much on the defensive that's going through into turn three having come out of the Andretti hairpin so we are waiting for some other drivers uh, so they can run for the best part of an hour on these uh, if they fully laid in the tanks uh, don't forget if you want to take advantage of the affiliate link that we have with ExpressVPN you can head to expressvpn.com forward slash the sim grid sign up to a 12 month package and you get three months free uh, also there has been a warning to the 88 of all in racing uh, for avoidable contact with the 349 of vrm racing on the very first lap so uh yeah so we've had three warnings and a drive-through already the drive-through is the minimum uh, penalty that drivers will be receiving or teams will be receiving if it is warranted and then they can put that all the way up to a stop go 30 which is what the uh, stewards can actually do for those wondering about uh, uh, rapid GT 99 says what does what did Dow King do well he went up the inside of the 35 car and that was the Kings of Asphalt car that was going through into uh, I think that was turn two on lap three and that caused a massive problem as a result but now Alexander Suchinov is uh, being held up slightly by Fenny Christoph who seems to be the cork in the bottle here and then you've got uh, Blotto, Gerardis, Schneider not too far behind uh, and Bischoff um, Marco Bischoff in the 995 they started P12 after qualifying they were at the sharp end of the grid and uh, they were 0.243 off of the pole position time from Michele Nerbi uh, in the 20 minute qualifying session uh, now the track has really rubbered in track temperature has increased to 22 degrees Celsius a three kilometer an hour wind and the track now is optimum as Gerardis uh, is possibly going to get past Blotto who went a bit wide outbreaked himself and that has allowed Gerardis and Schneider to get through on Blotto going through into the corkscrew and outbreaking yourself like that on the corkscrew is not what you want to do there Ewan no it really does affect you uh, going down towards the rainy curve as well that's exactly what we just saw there and it's really slow, slowed down quite a lot there as Blotto so don't quite know what's happened there because uh, oh no he's just got in behind uh, the next car so yeah a bit of a strange moment there but he's down the order a little bit anyway as uh, uh, Sitinov now goes to the outside line into turn two is he going to be able to make a move not really on the Aston Martin maybe a switch back through turn three and into turn four around the outside he goes and uh, yeah that, that'll be that'll do him into uh, into the next position he goes so uh, yeah good move from him textbook really it's it's a long corner is the hairpin at, uh, at turn two and uh, it, it's, it's double apex as well you want to clip the first one really and then uh, more importantly clip the second one for a good exit but you know if you drive down the outside through the first part you can um, switch around and, and uh, get a good exit it does give you the outside for the next corner but if you get such a good exit that uh, sometimes it won't even matter as we just saw there so a good move for him uh, and it gets up another place but we're going to jump up the order just a little bit for, to uh, left relay Schumacher and Lintner who are all in a bit of a train seventh place this battle is all over at the moment so um, yeah it's it's fairly important with regards to this race interesting to see that they've all um, dropped Hunsig by the way as uh, we look at the championship standings 32 points of a championship lead right now if things were to stay as they are yes indeed and uh, Shevatolov uh, leading the way quite comfortably 8.3 seconds ahead of Mirko Ferrari uh, then we've got uh, the 28 that is uh, Michael Romagnoli 
Now, the interesting thing here is that Lada Sport Rosneft, Aston Martin, Odox, Audi, Yaz Heat, Richard Mille, Ferrari, Lexus with Team Fordzilla, and then the triple three virtual drivers by TX3 is a Nissan. So five different manufacturers in the top five. We're uh, just past the first 40 minutes and a couple new penalties uh, coming in. There's been a warning given to the Jean Alesi eSports car um, for an unsafe rejoin, uh, which was an incident between them and the 193 of uh, Igor Zanella, actually, funnily enough, on lap five. And then there is a drive through penalty and it's the number 10, Deep Purple uh, Bentley, that will get a drive through penalty for avoidable contact on the 88 of All In Racing. And that was on lap number 10. And it seems like the Lada Sport Rosneft uh, fan group are coming in. There's Chris Sever coming in from 25th. Drops, drop him outside of the top 30, I would imagine. But we're getting to that stage now. It's a 65 minute uh, maximum stint time per driver. So the biggest question now is what are the strategy calls going to be? Because it's always dependent on how much fuel is in that car, which has got the best capacity, who are using the highest map possible for all right outright speed, or are they actually staying like map two, map three, just to make sure that they save those little bits of fuel here and there, especially like say, um, not always using a bit of trail braking, going down one bit of the corkscrew, but actually lifting off and letting the car, the engine braking do the work. And that saves you a bit of fuel. Yeah, it will do. Um, so uh, it, it'll be interesting to see at the end of this, didn't really, who can stretch this the furthest. It could be very, very important. Or is somebody going to hit early maybe to try and get a bit of an undercut on the rest? We're getting towards that kind of uh, the undercut zone, as we'll call it. Um, but oh, that's a bit, big slide from uh, Offerman through the corks group straight down the inside oh Felix Dieppers trying to get through around the outside through the penultimate corner very close oh contact and the 99 goes off and for a spin in front of the rest of the field does he keep it out of the everybody else he does indeed gets going again that must have been a scary and he can't even get going again the sand is very very well not, well, not very grippy, let's put it that way. He's trying to get going, he can't do it at the moment. This is dangerous now, because there's a train of cars right in front of him right now. Let's hope everybody avoids... Dear, oh dear, not what it, it, we wanted to see, really. A real shame to see. And, uh, yeah, it, it's just a bizarre moment, really, because he was driving so well, and then that kind of thing happens. A very, very bizarre moment, indeed. And uh, Shevatolov is about to lap him. So the leader's about to lap him as well. And the good thing was, is that Deeper's actually held the brakes, just kept that car where it was meant to be. And one of the things that race control do, do frown upon, and if it is a case that you have an incident, like we saw there with Deeper's, you don't hold the brakes and let everyone go through, you are at their mercy, uh, big time. And uh, yeah, I mean, the thing is, is that the Porsche is exact, is uh, the heaviest car on the grid in terms of uh, dry weight before BOP is even instigated. And also, if you've got a rear wheel drive car with a rear mounted engine like the Porsche has, that is great on the, on the road. On the, and we've got the, oh, Gerardis from TF oh, wow. Racing has gone off. Uh, and that is coming out of turn six onto the Ray Hall straight. And, uh, I think Gerardis uh, was very, very lucky there indeed. Yeah, it's a high-speed corner, and you don't want to go off there at all. There is the Lamborghini recovering right now for TF Racing. So uh, this is back going again, but he is now a lap down as well. We're getting down towards that uh, point. It is, it's their debut race as well, by the way, I'm being told. But um, it's, it's, it, we're getting to that point in the race now where the leader is starting to lap cars. Admittedly, those first two were because... Uh, those cars had particular issues, but he can now see the back of the field behind him And now this is getting very interesting indeed. We're seeing the, these battles are going to develop now uh, Ferrari and Romagnoli going across the line one more time to uh, complete the 32nd lap of the day 45 minutes into this race, but they're now going to have to start lapping cars It's difficult to pass cars at the best of time and when we get these lap cars involved It's going to be really really hectic especially because if you look at the first lap cars that, uh, that the leader's going to have to encounter. It's a train of five or six battling cars 
and that's really not what you want at any stage in the race, uh, never mind so early on. So it's going to be very, very high stress, high pressure as well, uh, even for the race leader soon. Yep, so looks like there's uh, P29 P to P32 all in that line there. Uh, but I'm just keeping my eyes up and down the timing tower. Liffy Lay closing in. Uh, we're trying to close in on Otoki, but Otoki is actually uh, half a second away from Mako Muri in the 32 GTWR car as Romagnoli and Ferrari filter their way through. And it looks like there has been and it looks like there has been an incident out of the final corner. Chris Sever has just yeah. been, yeah. Chris Sever has now uh, dropped a little bit further behind and has been lapped, well, will very soon be lapped by the leaders if he's not very much careful because you can see, yeah. So there is Ferrari and Romagnoli. So Sever has been lapped as a result of serving that drive through penalty. But Romagnoli and Ferrari trying to pick up the pace, but uh, Shevetalov uh, not uh, not blinking and just staying ahead. 46 minutes into um, the race itself, the Lada Sport Rosneff crew are leading quite comfortably. 9.4 seconds. Dutelma from the Triple Three virtual races by uh, TX3 closing in on Marco Macri for 14th position. That's the 192 Racing Line Motorsport Porsche. And this is going to be rather intense. And then the VRM Lexus of De Havilanda uh, not too far behind as Dutel looks up the inside. Macri opens the door ever so slightly for the Nissan. I think Dutel could get through. They're side by side coming out of turn two. Macri runs wide but tries to get the whole shot. And up and they are going, they were side by side heading up into there, but Mure and Otoki going side by side of all places. Well, into the corkscrew, Leon Otoki was looking, uh, and Marco Mure got compromised by a Mercedes back marker. That could have been, uh, I'm not too sure which one that might have been in front, but and that is uh, Jean in the Mercedes that uh, actually, Laurie Jean in the uh, 991 Mercedes that compromised the Ferrari. And now this gives Leon Otoki the opportunity to try and get fifth before he hands over that car in the first pit stop phase. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was brave actually going up towards the corkscrew. But when you see that opportunity, you've kind of just got to go for it, especially with the traffic. And this is what I mean. The traffic is going to present more of those opportunities in the next few, like, oh, well, for the next two hours, really. It's going to be constant from now on. So you, you've got to kind of take take advantage of those opportunities, especially given that, that, you know, some of these guys have spent the last 40 minutes looking at the back of the car in front of them. Um, and they'd really rather not do that for any longer. So um, there's going to be some people taking advantage in whatever whatever point of the circuit they actually can. And that's what we saw from Otoki there. Not desperation kicking in just for the moment, but um, it certainly is an eagerness to get through um, starting to uh, creep over these guys at the moment. As we've got somebody spun out of the corkscrew as well, the number 99 car. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's not been a good race uh, for Felix Steepers in this one that Porsche has been in the walls today and I'm afraid spinning around again coming out of the court too struggling to get going again I'm afraid as well there he is oh that that was nigh on uh, beached on that curb and there is that's Odox Mo Motorsport I think have just gone past uh, which is the 121 Audi with Alberto Garcia currently running in 11th position 4.3 seconds behind uh, Yaroslav Honsik who runs out the top 10 but the battle for fifth position between Marco Muro and Leon Otoki so it's GTWR versus Unicorns of Love as Otoki gets really deep into the braking zone through the Andretti hairpin. Uh, and we did see them last lap around. They were going nigh on side by side through the corkscrew. Does Otoki have the guts and intestinal fortitude to do that again? Well, we could find out in a couple of moments' time. But uh, there is a little bit of a battle between Contor Giannis in the Greeks of Lucky squad. Uh, 34 Lamborghini ahead of, well behind of uh, Vinny Oliveira and there is a 15 second time penalty for the ambassadors for Henveld and Marco Bischoff gets a proper slap on the wrist and that was the incident with the uh, DC Sim Racing NL uh, McLaren that had Marco uh, Menno van der Molen behind the wheel and that was at the top of the corkscrew so that was why um, Van der Molen actually uh, got uh, 
spun around and ended up at the back end of the field. Well, Ambassador for Renvelton, the 995 McLaren, pairing of Marco Bischoff and Jonas van Droyten, this has become a race to forget. Well, it, it might do, but uh, there's still time to recover, let's not forget. Uh, there's still time for other guys to have issues and, and whatnot, so, um, you know, it's never over until it's over, and we'll see where they come out at the end of it, but you're right, it's not looking great for them at the moment. This is the back for P20, though, as you mentioned, and it's still uh, Oliveira defending. He seems like he's been doing a lot of that throughout the first hour of the race, really, and uh, yeah, he's got a couple of cars behind him still. Um, with uh, Christensen who's recovering let's not forget from that issue he had a little bit earlier on running inside the top 15 earlier but now outside of the top 20 um, in, excuse me in this field trying to make his way back into um, that uh, in that in, into that top 20 I guess at, at this point as well with just under two hours and ten minutes to go we're not too far away from pit stops either so um, these guys might settle for where they are right now and let the pit stop strategy decide everything before they uh, go out on the attack once again but uh, you never know there could be a late lunge um, from somebody somewhere and we're certainly holding out hope for, for that kind of thing as uh, one of the cars now does come into the pit that's the 995 um, to, uh, to to do its, its penalty as well as um, pit stop as well so uh, that's going to have to uh, as it leaves its pit box now so uh, yeah the pit stops are going to kick off in the next few moments and it remains to be seen who's been fuel saving who's going to go long who's going to undercut who's going to short fill in this one and who's going to get an advantage out of this next pit stop cycle yep so the leaders um that's the pairing of uh Shevardolov and ogorodnikov leading by now over 10 seconds ahead of uh, Mikko ferrari for sfr italia then it is our uh, Michael Romagnoli for GTWR RHG Academy um, for the second round of the uh, SimGrid VCR World Cup, the 24 hours of Thrustmaster at Spa. Um, new alliance formed between uh, GTWR and the uh, RHG uh, stable run by uh, now IndyCar racer Romain Grosjean. Um, so good to see that uh, more real life racers getting themselves involved with a lot of great sim racing talent and bringing people to the fore for the future so james de havilanda in the vrm racing uh lexus battling away that is the 934 mclaren and that's the virtual drivers by tx3 AAA esports entry johan ulfella uh, behind the wheel of that car and then they've got Marcus Eichhorn just behind but this battle for fifth position Marco Mure has not been allowed to breathe courtesy of the number 14 a BMW of Leon Otoki as they just get past the 34 uh, that was the uh, Thinker the TS Sport car there uh, that they've just gotten past and again oh bit wide there for Marco Mure and Leon Otoki sends it from another area code and the BMW Unicorns of Love now back up into fifth position. That was great patience from Leon Otoki to make the move. Waited for Marco Muri to do an unforced error, and Muri just opened the door for him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, it was bizarre almost. Um, but uh, Muri was halted just a little bit by that Lamborghini. Let's not forget, may have been um, just ever so slightly hindered by it, but. Um, yeah, it's it's what can happen. They've got another couple of cars up in front, although not for a little while. As we've got another penalty confirmation on your screen right now—a drive-through penalty for the 995 uh, Ambassadors for Ren Welton car. Fish off. That's just confirmation of the avoidable contact drive-through uh, they have on the Triple uh, One car on lap 11. That was a fair time ago now, nearly 30 laps ago, but. Um, still it needed to be sorted out and uh, the whole process had to be uh, had to go through thoroughly so uh, that's all been decided right now and confirmed on your screen right now but um, yeah Marco Murray did a good job of defending for such a long time but Leon Otoki he felt like it was only a matter of time really and um, with the way he was applying the pressure so uh, yeah he's eventually through and uh, may, might be able to set his sights on the guys in front but because he spent so long behind um, Murray he might not be able to. It's, it's going to be. It's a fairly large gap for him to catch up to now. It is indeed. Uh, we've got back on our screens Marcus Eichhorn from Leipa Esports. Uh, there is Yaroslav Honzik, and oh, that was 
that was a bit cheeky there from Marcus Eichhorn. He went straight up the inside of James de Havilland uh, in the 349 Lexus from VRM. Now they're about to go nearly side by side, heading down into the Andretti hairpin. And round the outside, de Havilland sends it. Eichhorn does, does the old thou shalt not pass manoeuvre there, just keeps it tight on the racing line. You can just see the poker face on Eichhorn on on the picture in picture just then like literally just went yep yeah, I'm gonna send it uh, that that man has a proper poker face as Marcus Eichhorn yeah, he doesn't need you kind of need one as well when you're on camera to everybody to see uh, but uh, but there we are he's doing a good job of defending at the moment because he's coming under a lot of pressure right now uh, there's a Ferrari involved Lamborghini Aston Martin as well and there's uh, Offerman not too far behind in the 166 he might be able to get involved as well but uh, we've seen this battle going on for a long time actually um, De Havilande has uh, been really applying the pressure for a long time now uh, but not really oh dear, I saw in the background there the Lamborghini involved in a bit of an incident up towards the corkscrew with the 52 of Christensen that Paul's car was trying to recover from issues uh, and uh, makes his way down the corkscrew the unorthodox route I'm afraid dear oh dear it looks like those two have come into contact didn't quite see how but that's why you don't go side by side into the corkscrew a perfect example of it really yes indeed looks like uh, the number 17 oh now I've just seen Antoine Fleury who has taken over the uh, I think it's well yeah there we go I've got uh, a five second penalty for car 17 this was an incident between them and uh, Ufella in the virtual drivers by TX3934 McLaren on lap 10. A five second time penalty for the number 17 crew. As uh, Jardier in the Yaz Heat Richard Mille um, 149 Ferrari closing in on Good Time Racing's Bastian Lindner. Now, earlier on in the race, as we are fast approaching the well, the, we've just elapsed the 57 minute mark here so within the next eight minutes these drivers will have to bring the cars in and hand over to another driver they can uh, alternatively if they pit it and they decide to stay out for a second stint that may be the case because some driver teams are two drivers as opposed to three so that's where you might be able to divvy up uh, some shifts between the pairings so Honzik uh, closing in on Bastian Lindner and on the previous lap Honzik sets exactly the same lap time there's Jardier himself uh, so he'll be streaming on uh, YouTube <laughs> and Twitch at the particular moment so uh, running uh, currently third in the championship um, before coming into this round as a oh, little bit of overcorrection there for Jardier in the Ferrari as oh Bastian Linda now that is going up the inside whoa, of one of the Lamborghinis that's oh that's close and Jardier just manages to get around the outside coming through the outside of the corkscrew are we gonna see just keep an eye on this so the um Linda gets compromised Linda gets compromised then all of a sudden Jardier just goes look at that stoic face there from the Czech driver absolutely perfect way to get your way past another driver when a back marker gets in the way and that's exactly what happened right there into the pit lane no sorry there's a back marker coming into the pit lane uh there just in front of him uh Hansi there though did you, did you just see that it was, it was about this point in the lap last time around when we were looking on board with him he was fiddling with settings and things like tire pressures i think he was at the pit stop just um, changing them while he's in the heat of battle um, so, you know, that's uh, quite remarkable to me anyway to see that uh, making these adjustments completely on the fly while he's in such uh, an uh, intense battle. But um, here is uh, Honzik still in that car. He's got that uh, driving time thing uh, up on his screen as well, showing him that he's got still got an hour and 15 remaining if he wants it. Um, and it, it, yeah, that, that's this battle continuing on, by the way. Marco McCree trying to defend from Determe but he's not been able to stay in front or has he back down the inside at turn four and they're still going to go side by side pushes out in this Nissan just a little bit and the recovering Darren King's trying to get involved in this as well yeah trying to go through up the in uh, he was trying to go through the inside when Macri lost it and this is three different manufacturers Porsche versus 
<laughs> versus Nissan versus Aston Martin as they all head their way up towards the corkscrew turn seven eight and eight a and uh, do down a little bit later on the brakes Ah, right the leaders now already pitted so that could be a changeover to Igor Ogorodnikov very very shortly from Yaroslav uh, Shevatolov uh, so it will be a driver swap required so we're getting into that phase we've just gone over the hour mark Dutel now backs out of the battle and will pull the Nissan triple three virtual drivers by now the Nissan here quite interesting looks like they're going to be going for the undercut and out on cue the one the only Igor Ogorodnikov uh, takes the wheel of the number 41 Lada Sport Rosneft car but at the moment uh, the virtual championship standings here on round three uh, has a lead of over 30 points as do town Vinny Oliveira pits uh, so that now means that the number 28 the GTWR RHG Academy car with Michael Romagnoli leading the way ahead of uh, surprise surprise here the GTRC endurance team Florian Becker behind the wheel of the 911 Porsche as there is Romagnoli uh, and there is uh, Ferrari actually just up ahead as there are blue flags that's the TF racing car needs to get out of the way very quickly gets over to the right before the Andretti hairpin and Romagnoli in second position and what's more hang on a second isn't that SFR Italia's Mirko Ferrari that is now leading the race it is yeah, yeah he, is, he is leading the race because uh, Ogre Rodnikov is now into the uh, what was then uh, the leading car, the 41 car, which is down in 13th position. So the pit stops have begun because we're an hour into the race and you have to drive a swap. Um, so uh, Ogre Rodnikov is into that car, but he won't be finishing, um, you, you might imagine, because uh, that will mean uh, that uh, he, well, he'll break the rules. So can't do that. Uh, but uh, he's in 12th at the moment. There's a couple of cars coming out of the pit lane at the moment. It's about to get a lot, lot busier down in pit lane though. Here's Bastian Lindner, not too far away from Honzik, who's now into 8th place, but things are not going to stay that way as we've got a 15 second time penalty for the car number 217. That is the, um, the Desperate Measures car. It seems that, uh, yeah, they've uh, come into contact a little bit with uh, somebody, but they, they are a long way down already, it seems. So, um, yeah, they're, they're uh, they're going to be penalised even further and they're going to be even further down the order I'm afraid oh the 32 is coming to dramas and oh, oh there's been a crash in the pit lane entrance into the pit lane oh no Marco Muri oh my goodness me he was battling that has that has caused a massive change in what is going to happen for the number 32, I know that the words that are probably being discussed between the team at GTWR RHG Academy are coming into this round. They were eighth. Ooh. They had a DNF last time out at Monza on home soil. That car is trundling, is is tr is we're having to wait. Can you not get reversed? Not too sure whether it. Yeah. He's stuck. He's stuck in second. Stuck in in second. Yeah, that car. That car's going nowhere. That car's going nowhere. That's that's more than likely going to be a return to garage and a second DNF in a row, and that will cause the biggest damage possible to their championship hopes. They were P8. That has really changed this story, and that's drama. That was coming into the pit lane because the Tokyo had gotten past. The, oh. the the biggest thing here is even if he can get it going again, even if he can get going again. Look at how much time he's lost. He's so far behind and more cars stream through once more. He's not even made his pit stop yet. So even if he can get turned back round again and get going, he might not even be able to get points in this race. It's going to be very, very difficult for him to anyway, as he's now got reverse finally. And he's uh, getting up, up the, uh, as a reversing Ferrari. Roman Yoli reversing in the pit lane there because he's missed his pit box. He had to go backwards in the pit lane to, to uh, get service. What is going on in this race in the moment? These guys who are up the front of the order, not uh, seemingly not uh, getting into the pit lane and, and, and whatever, uh, 
correctly as the 32 now finally gets into the pit lane. Marco Mure has completely undone an hour's work, I'm afraid, and that's going to lose him so many points in this race as Igor Ogorodnikov gets himself into the lead of this one once again. Ferrari is probably going to be second ahead of Romagnoli, but um, goodness me, the 32, big drama for those guys. Eighth place in the championship at the moment with that fourth place they got at the Hungar Ring. A DNF last time out. It's going to be as good as a DNF for them this time out because it looks like um, they, they are going to... Uh, they're going to... Uh, oh, Ferrari hasn't made a driver stop here, has he? Ferrari hasn't made a driver oh, stop. Fer oh, that's... that's oh, my so goodness me. They need to make now, two has in this the, race, has don't the, they? Yeah. The biggest thing now is that what is the penalty that is going to hit SFR Italia? All that work from them also has been undone. Yeah. Oh, well, we... Let's see. Potentially, they've forgotten to uh, select, select it and, and, and do it all properly. But you know, it, whatever it is, it's a catastrophic mistake, really, isn't it? And it, it's going to mean uh, they're going to have to make an extra stop. They're going to have to be a little bit careful on drive time uh, limit with this one. You can do two hours fifteen. Um, so you know, you might do the next hour Ferrari, but you know, he needs to make two driver changes. So he needs to be careful with that. Um, because you know, if 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 his teammate gets in next, then he can only do 15 minutes or 45 minutes. He needs to do uh, enough time, obviously, to uh, to make sure the fair share rule is kind of abided by. So um, yeah, this this is not good for Ferrari either. So two top running cars are going to be out of the equation here. Mure well down now. Ferrari is also going to be well well down as well. Oh my goodness, Mamma Mia, I think, is probably the understatement of the year for both those Italian teams. I really, really feel for them. And that just shows how quickly your season can be turned upside down. And that has happened for both the 32 and now what is, uh, now what is the 446. Um, my head is in my hands right now, but we have to concentrate on what else is happening. I've just noticed that the 52... Paul Simsport car has got a 15 second um, addition on the right hand side of the timing tower uh, we'll wait to hear that looks like there might be a penalty coming through Stefan Zero now takes over from Martin Schumacher in the uh, GC racing car there's Janis Jordakis in the Greek Suvlaki squad that front end on that looks a bit uh, second hand and the penalty for Paul Simsport this is uh, a 15 second time penalty uh, well, the 193 I've just noticed has got a speeding in pit lane penalty. That is the racing line motorsport. So that will be uh, Daniele Floris that will uh, have to come back into the pits to serve that. Uh, so that would be the incident. That is car number 35 that was compromised. That was the Kings of Asphalt car. That was Vinnie Oliveira. And that was probably why Rasmus Christensen might have had that dramas earlier on. Niels van der Kerkel, uh, back behind, uh, now in behind the wheel of the 192 Racing Line Motorsport, having taken over from Marco Macri. That car has made its way up into 12th position, having started 17th on the road. And Niels van der Kerkel now closing in. That's the number seven virtual drivers by TX3 car. And that has currently got uh, Julien Henault behind the wheel of that car, who's just uh, taken over from Ludovic Le Hanaf. And with the amount of time that has been uh, that has cost the number 32 car, which has now got of all people, I think. Uh, let me just have a quick look. That looks to be. Uh, I think that is, and I'm wondering if that is uh, that is Andrea Benedetti. Uh, that is behind the wheel of that car so he will be looking to exercise some damage limitation but Niels van der Kerkel trying to close in on Hennel for that 11th position but then there's also the Nissan triple three from virtual drivers by TX3 that has got Vraiment behind the wheel um, but Ogorodnikov leading quite comfortably by 17 and a half seconds they got the uh they got the jump on uh, Ferrari, but Ferrari needs to make that secondary pit stop uh, to change drivers. And that will be to Patrick G uh, Girometti, who will have to take the wheel of that car. 
and with an hour and ten minutes almost done and dusted here at Laguna Staker Ewan um, we've had more twists and tails than I think I could probably shake a stick at but it's really spiced up what's happened here in Monterey well, the, the car off actually just you finishing your sentence the car off uh, coming through uh, a very fast left hander and I think that's a retirement for the 991 uh, which has had a terrible day really um, so I think that is a retirement now but um, by the way some of you may be noticing that Amos Larito also has uh, that little two next to his name which suggests that he still has to make two driver changes in this race that is correct because let's not forget they made a very 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 early pit stop in this one I think it was forced upon them um, because of an incident that they had, I didn't see, but uh, I think it was, uh, just joining the dots I think it was anyway, um, so uh, he's still in that car, Martin Darlins will be getting into it at some point, but uh, it, and they have to be a little bit careful with drive time limits and so on as well, but they should be okay and they still do have to make two pit stops even without the two driver change rule they would have to make two pit stops anyway because they're not going to make it um, on fuel they made a very very early pit stop so they're a little bit out of sequence um, just to uh, just to cover that one but uh, yeah it's just a real shame for Ferrari but it really plays into the hands of Olga Rodnikov and the Lada Sport Rosneft team who are leading this race now by a very long way 17 seconds in front of Ferrari another 11 back to uh, Kausch so then they've nearly got a 30 second lead in this race technically um, because you know Ferrari is going to drop back um, in this race that's a huge huge lead for the 41 and they're taking a big step forward in the championship right now however yes he is starting to get it together Iman Murphy is in fifth place right now yeah I've just had a quick look through the pit stops uh, so far on the live timing and um, Amos Lorito actually pitted just before the nine minute mark completed in this race that car has been in Lorito's hands for the last 61 and a half minutes so in the next lap or two Amos Lorito will have to pit from 16th position so we'll have effectively have reset the the driver stint time after that first early foray into the pits Heyman Murphy now being hounded by Team Fordzilla Lexus's Fabian Pifay in uh, the RCF GT3 not too far behind uh, looks to be Stefan Zero who's actually dropped behind Fabian Buffet we ride on board the dash cam of the Lexus RCF into turn two the Andretti hairpin Buffet uh, actually started on Assetto Corso Competizione remember commentating on him on another league where he pulled off one of the most dynamite overtakes I've seen at um, Suzuka around the first corner and it was for second position with about 12 minutes on the clock remaining in that particular race so uh, he is a very very credible sim racer in his own right switched over to ACC and now with Team Ford so he's become one of the mainstays of them uh, Lorito has just pitted with an hour and two minutes completed in his previous stint uh, so we will see how close he gets to Eamon Murphy and that's rather close going through the corkscrew right there and then yeah they are very very close indeed actually Murphy is under a little bit of pressure from Pife right now uh, and they've got a bit of traffic just in front that's uh, Clint Muller um, in the uh, kind of dark red Mercedes not Mercedes that's a BMW uh, and there's another BMW I believe just in front of them as well um, so they've got to negotiate that one in the next few moments and uh, hopefully they do indeed uh, manage that without uh, too many uh, problems but uh, no, it's a good fight going on for fifth place and it's a little bit more than maybe these guys were expecting let's not forget as well that Team Vorzilla Lexus are right up there in the championship they've got a sixth place at the Hungaroring and 11th last time out at Monza at the moment they're looking at a top five quite possibly their fifth place in the championship right now and with some above them having some issues uh, speaking of issues saw one there for uh, Brancini uh, who's uh, lost another place but yeah that would mean um, that uh, Team Fortzilla Lexus would gain uh, a good few places in the championship and so uh, yeah that would be good to see for those guys although I'm not entirely sure um, if it's going to stay that way of course we'll wait and see um, but no it's, it's a good run for them as things stand yeah there's been another penalty issued it is the number 10 that has just been given a drive-through penalty 
Team Purple uh, for contact with the 111 of DC Sim Racing NL. Oh, the du all Dutch crew have been in the wars today here at Laguna Seca, but uh, Deep Purple get another get a drive through penalty. There's uh, Davide Branchini uh, battling away for what is 19th. Well, that's going to be 19th position, but there is a Ferrari just behind, and that is the 32 car, uh, the recovering. GTWR R8 G Academy with uh, Andrea Benedetti behind the wheel. Nice on board here, courtesy of our broadcast director Mike Yao. Um, on the left hand door of the Ferrari 488 GT3 of Yaz Heat, Richard Mills, uh, Eamon Murphy in the 149, trying to close in on a Niles uh, Klinkmuller from Unicorns of Love. This is the battle for E4 and five Jarno Kalsch is about 3.8 seconds up the road in the 911 for GTRC in the Porsche and uh, GTRC at the moment coming into this round well they haven't had a season to remember so far in season three and currently at the moment just having a look at where they are 27th uh, at the minute so they scored a couple of points at Monza they finished 38th at the Hungaroring and this result here if they end up P3 this could catapult them up the championship order probably maybe get them into the top 25 or higher thereof but now the track is fully rubbered in we're up to full speed optimum on the uh, weather uh, the weather uh, generator up at the top right hand corner of your screens track temperature now 24 degrees celsius and we've got another yellow flag out on the circuit this time oh no more dramas for the 32 oh, yeah. the 32 having dramas that is coming uh, towards the left hander at turn five and it has gone from bad to worse an incident on the pit lane entry for marco Mure and now andrea benedetti comes under problems Ooh. and yeah i think that's that that's a massive issue i think that's hardware related yeah it could well be um i think you might be right on that one because uh, that did look very very strange actually and uh, yeah we'll uh, we'll have to get to the bottom of it but um goodness me what a terrible day it has been uh, for the 32 team they were looking to do better this season than their second place that they got in the Endurance Cup last season but I'm afraid with performances that they've had so far it's not going to turn out that way two DNFs out of five you cannot afford even one DNF really the way the, these guys are going at the front of the field so uh, yeah it's been a real shame for them but they are now well well down in this championship and they're probably going to be looking for race wins from here on in yes indeed that's the case but Fabian Pifay closing in on Eamon Murphy, the battle between Team Fordzilla Lexus and Yaz Heat Richard Mill wages on. They've got a couple of back markers just up ahead of them, one of which will be the 193 Mercedes with Daniele Flores uh, just up ahead. Uh, and they've also got that is uh, ah, that's uh, Nils uh, Klinkmuller in the Unicorns of Love car. So the battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth. Oh, it's going to get rather spicy, but what I've also noticed here is that Klinkmüller has started closing the gap on Jarno Kausch. And on the last lap alone, Klinkmüller dropped the gap by eight tenths of a second. Jarno Kausch, 123.4. Klinkmüller, a 122.6. And closing that gap now down to 1.8 seconds. I think uh, the Porsche starting to struggle in this heat and Fabian Pifay trying to keep a nice cool calm head uh, on his shoulders as is uh, the likes of maybe uh, Stefan Zero who is four seconds behind the 66 in sixth position one hour 41 minutes and 10 seconds remaining let's have a look at this replay here now this is what happens here as oh now straight away there's a i've just seen now that was the uh, move there from now this is earlier on from uh marco muri ah it just gets literally hit from behind that was the number number seven virtual driver's car that went into the back end 
of Marco Mure. That's how that happened. Oh, now Klinkmull has got a drive through for blocking on car number 32 on lap 41. That would have been the car with Benedetti behind the wheel. So Klinkmull has got to serve a drive through. That has slightly compromised Unicorns of Love. And we've also got a five second time penalty for the Coach Dave Academy car. So a drive through now and now a five second penalty. And that was with the incident with car 349 VRM Racing, which would have probably had maybe De Handerville behind the wheel. Uh, but Ewan, um, the twists and tails, they keep on coming here at Laguna. Yeah, absolutely. It's relentless at the moment and uh, they don't seem to be stopping. Let's have another look at uh, this replay and see what we can uh, hope to see here. This is the 32, by the way, and what happened on its, its last uh, little issue that we saw uh, for this car when it was coming out of turn four so this is turn three turn four just in front and uh, we'll wait to see what uh, what their issue is this time is it just a single car issue hits that curb on the inside goes into the sand on the outside oh a spin across and hit by one of the mercedes there dear oh dear a real shame for not only the 32 but that mercedes there as well that was uh, very much involved in the pointy end of this race it's just going from bad to worse for the 32 though real real shame for them and uh, yeah spin around recovered but no points for them today surely yeah that's a race they're gonna have to uh, dust themselves off from and gain themselves uh, a bit of confidence and motivation for the nine hours of Paul Ricard on the third on the third of July that will be the penultimate round of the of, of season three of Endurance Cup by Thrustmaster here live on the Sim Grid. We're just eight and three quarter minutes away from the halfway point. The three hours of Laguna Seca with myself, Alex Goldschmidt, and uh, my good friend Ewan O'Leary, your commentators for the remainder of today's proceedings. Uh, don't forget to follow Sim Grid on all the respective social media channels and if you are watching on the official SimGrid YouTube channel don't forget to like this video hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell uh, the latter being very important when new content goes live here on the SimGrid itself Daniel Di Oliveira now battling away that is the 73 car a good re solid recovery from the Honda uh, and that is with uh, Dyer behind the wheel uh, Sebastian Dreyer partnered with Tom Schneider in the Seoul Honda NSX they've got themselves up into 23rd position they started uh, in 21st and um, it's a good showing on as they're getting uh, they're getting rather closer to Danny Di Oliveira oh the 17 oh had a bit of a moment there that front bumper has probably hit the barriers and that has comp compromised Sebastian Dreyer what on earth oh my goodness me now that was the number 17 car and that was uh Pret. so Pret had a moment came straight back into the path of sebastian dreyer compromised him and then all of a sudden that has allowed a bit of an unlapping uh courtesy of the 995 i think or was it um, really i think that was the 995 mclaren there uh, that will have uh, Jonas van Droysen behind the wheel because Marco Bischoff will have handed over. But yeah, a bit of compromising there for Sebastian Dreyer who will be far from happy as Klinkmüller is now in the pits serving the drive-through penalty. That has now released the likes of Yannick Huoff and Michele Nerbi and also uh, the 121 of Odox Motorsports, Gerard martinez Amer. Uh, in the Audi, Klinkmüller has now served that drive-through penalty, so it has been cleared. But that has really spiced things oh. up. But uh, oh no, Stefan Zero has been has turned around. That was Stefan Zero though in sixth place. He's lost it. He's dropped the BMW. Where on? Where on? How on? That has dropped him outside of the top ten. Uh, uh, that's P10 for Stefan Zero. Oh my goodness, like literally I saw it turn, I couldn't believe my eyes there, you and O'Leary. Oh, well, yeah, unbelievable to see and uh, that's given Klinkwell immediately a position there, by the way, in his recovery from that drive-through. But yeah, it remains to be seen what happened, but uh, goodness me, 
two spins, uh, sorry, one spin for uh, one BMW and one drive through for the other. It's not been a good 10 minutes or so for uh, that particular manufacturer, but uh, yeah, they're, they're going to continue on either way as uh, Nerby, the man who got that car onto pole position, is uh, now up the, uh, or trying to get up the order in instead of uh, Ruoff as this battle is happening for third place right now. This is the closest one probably um, inside the top 10 with uh, Kaush Murphy and Pipe all battling together. And by the way, we saw that little incident with the 17 car of uh, Pretton not so long ago. He was the car who hit the 32 and that's probably why he was quite out of control when last time we saw him. Uh, and uh, it went uh, nearly into uh, some of the other cars but uh, it, hopefully he's sorted himself out now and these guys up front uh, have also sorted themselves out there running third, fourth, uh, so, yeah, third, third, fourth and fifth as things stand. Pifei's applying a lot of pressure to Murphy at the moment but not I've not seen him make any attempt to overtake just for the moment which is a little bit strange. He's just kind of probing at the moment, just applying the pressure and not really intending to do anything with it. Yeah, Fabian Pifei, um, being very, very strategic, uh, to be completely honest with you. And uh, in all honesty, he'll wait. And that's what a good driver does. They wait, they'll strategize, they'll be in constant communication with the rest of the team. As now the battle for sixth, seventh and eighth. It's a Ferrari sandwiched in the middle of two Audis. As we ride on board with the number 28 of GTWR uh, RHG Academies, Michele Nerbi, Yannick Wolf just up ahead, heading into the braking zone for the Andretti Heppin here at turn two. Gerard uh, Martinez and about a second away from this battle uh, with Niles Klinkmüller and uh, Stefan Zierl running out the top ten. So the two BMWs about 2.9 sec seconds apart. As we have increased to over, we're on lap number 62 of this race and Ladasport Rosneft, the partnering of Igor Ogorodnikov and Yaroslav uh, Shevratilov uh, still leading as we are fast approaching the halfway point of this race. Mikhail Nerbi definitely trying to give the hurry up to Yannick Rov to try and force the 100 Audi from Good Time Racing into an unforced mistake but uh, don't count out Gerard Martinez Amer they uh, won the opening race of the season at the Hungara ring they finished P3 last time out at Monza and this could help their championship very very well indeed because uh, Martinez Amer has the ringside seat Mikel Nerbi looking towards the inside of T11 on Yannick Hoov as they both get a good run through the apex um, but at the moment, Yannick Wolf is sucking up the pressure like a sponge. He is indeed defending fairly well, actually, uh, is uh, Ruoff, and not had to do too much, but he's certainly putting his car in the right places and uh, yeah, making it obvious that he doesn't uh, want to let that position go for the moment as we go split screen because there's a battle for third going on as well as the battle uh, for sixth place um, that's uh, on your screen in the bottom right hand side as well. So. Uh, yeah, trying to keep a best of all these things all at once. Uh, Murphy actually did, was very, very close to giving it a go uh, on the last lap on the 9 one one there, but decided that that wasn't really the right moment and it was probably the right choice in the end, although he is still hounding uh, the car, the couch in front. So uh, a bit of traffic, maybe a, a bit of uh, a bit of a hold up and maybe Murphy can make a move here, here's the penultimate corner, is there going to be a dive into the hairpin with that traffic involved? Cars jinking one way and then the other, Murphy gives it a nose, he just shows the nose, lets him know that he's there but not going for it just for the moment, maybe now into the hairpin there will be a move but look at that Lexus in the background as well, it's right on his case, that Ferrari not great in a straight line and having to force the Lexus to the outside line trying to defend his fourth position he pushes out Pife and defends fairly well in the end but that would have been a scare for him well Fabian Pife knows exactly where to place that car at the right time and that's what he's trying to do he's effectively giving the hurry up to Yazhi Richard Mills Eamon Murphy who is in his own right trying to put pressure on Jarno Kausch and at the moment between uh, Pife and also Huoff, that gap is now extending to about 12.7 seconds and Huoff is still coming under 
uh, under fire from Micheli Narbi and Gerard Martinez Amer making that a now official three-way scrap for P6 so battle for P3 and for P6 and we are fast approaching the halfway parts of this race and going through into turn nine Eamon Murphy a little bit wider away from the apex in comparison with Fabian Pifay we now come through into the 11th and final corner Ogorodnikov now has nearly a 20.5 second lead over Mirko Ferrari from SFR Italia but the thing is is that that Lexus will not be in P2 at the end of this race there's the battle for P6 7 and 8 Ruoff versus Nerbi and Martinez Amer still waging on the gap between all three of them has slightly extended Martinez Amer drops a tenth to Nerbi who in turn drops about a tenth and a half to Yannick Ruoff as they go through into the Andretti hairpin we are now over the halfway point of round three of season three of the sim grid endurance cut by thrustmaster and there is a yellow flag out it is for the number 34 of all cars and that unfortunately means that the greek suvlaki squad in the lamborghini huracan who are out on the outside of turn six and they're in the barriers oh it's gone from bad to worse for greek suvlaki squad they were running in the bottom part of the top 20 then outside of the top 25 no points for them i fear this evening oh they've got to be careful here nerby's trying to make a move now on roof into the corkscrew but it's not going to work if jordakis is in the way as i suspect he might be going through here outside line through the rainy curve that is sensible but uh, Ruoff didn't really want to go through and now he lets them through now they all get through will nerby be able to use a run out of the penultimate corner for a go into the final one though he doesn't for the moment so he stays behind just for now but uh, yeah this is very very close battling once again traffic affecting things will that Ferrari have enough for a go into the hairpin though it doesn't seem strong enough in a straight line really you do need a car strong in a straight line fairly strong at least if you really want to go into the hairpin um, because otherwise you're just never going to get through so many corners around here it's not like you can have a cheeky dive anywhere um, so it's tricky but uh, the Ferraris now, as you can see, in the battle for third and the battle for sixth, the Ferraris are stuck where they are. And there's not really much you can do when you're driving one of them because you can't exactly out-drag someone on, uh, in a straight line. It's going to have to come in traffic quite probably. Yeah, very much the case there, Ewan, because now we're over the halfway point of this race. One hour, 27 minutes and 46 seconds still to go on the clock and as you can see picture in picture you've got the battle for sixth seventh and eighth main screen you've got third fourth and fifth so it's Jarno Couch versus Eamon Murphy and Fabian Pifay for third place as they now head their way through into the 11th and final corner of this 2.2 three eight mile road course based in wine country in California and then in the picture in picture you can now see that Michele Nerbi putting the pressure on to Yannick Hoff for sixth position, uh, Gerard Martinez Amer. Oh, there's been a little bit of a touch for six and seven, and that has allowed Michele Narbi and Gerard Martinez Amer. That was coming out of turn 11. Oh, there was the slightest of touches. Yannick Roth unsettled, and then all of a sudden it opened the floodgates for Michele Narbi and Gerard Martinez Amer. Not too sure on that one. I just caught the back end of it, but that was very, very close indeed. And now Martinez Amer. Flashing to the Jean Alessi Esports Academy Ferrari just up ahead, saying, "Look, you're, you're 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 not on the same battle as me. I need to get past blue flags, please." Oh, look at this now, Murphy. Good run out of the left hander and up the hill they go into the corkscrew. Outside line for the first block, gives him the inside line for the second. Is he going to be able to pull it off? What a fantastic move that is! Gets into third place in front of Kaus, who's been defending this whole time defending very well as well I must say but his time was definitely numbered in front of Murphy it seems that that Ferrari is definitely stronger and finally Murphy with the slight assistance of some traffic into the corkscrew finally gets through and now he's probably going to be able to put this Ferrari between himself and the Porsche behind consolidate this third place and then try and run with it it's going to turn into second let's not forget when Ferrari comes into the pit lane because he still wants to make two driver drops in this race 
as opposed to everybody else's one. Wow, that was a brilliant, precisely done move by Eamon Murphy up the inside of Jarno Karl from GTRC to take third position. Now it's a case of waiting to see when Fabian Pifay will do the move on the 9 uh, 911. But uh, just looking at some of the uh, some of the uh, stint times uh, that I've just seen, Igor Ogorodnikov has been in the Aston Martin and is currently leading this race on lap 69. Uh, 34 and a half minutes for Ogorodnikov in the 41. So give it about another. Well, I'm just looking at when uh, Shevardnadze uh, actually pitted, and Shevardnadze actually pitted just after 59 minutes in the car. So I'm just wondering if uh, Igor is going to go through for the next half an hour, and then put bring that car over to Yaroslav, and then that will be the final stint for this race. But Fabian Pifay starting to close now on Jarno Kausch. The gap is probably a little bit further than Fabian Pifay would like. It's just over six tenths of a second uh, at this particular moment as they have crossed the line. But still, this intrigue, this mystique around this fantastic Californian circuit is providing us with such an interesting uh, change of pace for what the story has been so far over the first two rounds at the Hungaroring and the Temple of Speed at Autodromo Nazionale di Monza. But WeatherTech uh, Raceway Laguna Seca has definitely brought the fireworks to season three of the Endurance Cup. Cup by oh, and crash. there is, uh, oh, now that there's been, oh my goodness me, seems like Julian Heno has caused a massive incident. Niels van der Kikau, I think, has might have just gotten away with that one. Uh, and that has allowed the likes of Romain Klinkmuller from Unicorns of Love now up into 11th position. Blue flags being waved to those in front of Jarno Kausch, which will probably include the 35 Ferrari. And that is of the Kings of Asphalt, uh, Max Oil, that will have Daniel Di Oliveira. Uh, let's have a look at this replay here. Now this is the incident between Michele Nerbi and Yannick Ruoff. Now Nerbi goes for the move up the inside. Ooh, and it's the slightest oh. of touches. That is more than a graze. That is a proper rub right there. But that's down to race control and what they decide. Uh, we've had three confirmed retirements, unfortunately. The 991 uh, virtual drivers by TX3 uh, car has retired. That's the Mercedes and the numbers 31 and 32 so tf racing have retired and also the 32 car that was being run by marco Mure and andrea benedetti they have also called it quits so three cars out of the 37 so we're down to 34 cars and uh yeah so now Niels uh klinkmuller closing in on the triple three that is the uh triple a esports virtual drivers by tx3 entry and that has got alexandre vormont behind the wheel uh giacomo uh, proiletti uh battling away with daniele branchini uh for position and that is for 23rd eamon murphy has got that's the desperate measures 217 bentley just up ahead oh there's fabian pufay he's like a little wrap up rat up of a drain pipe at the moment because he's right on the back bumper of yarn and cash that gap has gone down from six tenths to two tenths they come across the line 0.338 between yarn and cash and fabian pufay as the 217 needs to get out of the way sharpish because that could compromise yarn and cash no it hasn't gotten out of the way oh that's even compromised damon murphy the battle for third really has had the fire lit underneath it and the 217 that is desperate measures uh, and that has got i'm just trying to find out who that is behind the wheel of that car and that will be uh, alex uh, kopsov that needs to get out of the way very very quickly indeed Mancini, i think was off the road there actually um, going through turn three so uh, one of the bentley certainly was but uh, this is another bentley right now getting in the way just ever so slightly now can Kaus use this to get a run up on the corkscrew like Murphy did to him can he reply with exactly the same move it doesn't look like it going up the hill again but uh, yeah this desperate message car certainly in the way right now and uh, I guess there's no obligation to dive out of the way like there is 
uh, in F1, for example, but, you know, he certainly doesn't need to be defending at this point. If he was to defend, then he would, might get in, in a bit of trouble. <coughs> for the moment, it seems all fair enough to me, uh, but it's just getting quite, uh, it's getting quite close, uh, really, in this group right now. We're seeing uh, it's really starting to stack up with the Mercedes involved as well. As what I mentioned earlier on, the good sake, it's hard to overtake, even if you're a lap car, um, that you're trying to get through them as uh, one of those guys on the lead lap. It's still hard to get through uh, in these situations. So that's, that's that's what I mentioned a little bit earlier. But that's what's really going to spice up these battles. That's what it is doing. This third place battle right now is finally the desperate pressures can't get out of the way of Murphy, but not out of the way of Karsh and Pife just for the moment. They're going to have to try and get through at uh, a later date. But for the moment, the battle is going on between the two of them. Pife round the outside. He's going to go through the left-hander. You can see in the mirror of the Bentley there, but not able to get through right now. Oh, this uh, this is getting really, really close because now Jano Kausch would have wanted to have gotten past the 217 from Desperate Measures, but now has Fabian Pife breathing down the exhaust pipes of that Porsche. There is Alex Kopsov that we're riding on board with. You can see in his rear view mirror, there's the Porsche of Kausch, there's the Lexus of Pife. It's not getting any easier. And as you said, you rightly alluded there uh, to the Ewan, that it is a very, very difficult circuit to overtake. Since the fact that um, Murphy has gotten past Kopsov, he's now got a Mercedes in front of him and is trying to get past that. The Mercedes will try and pull out of the way, does so. That allows Eamon Murphy to get through and oh, oh my goodness me, that was threading the eye of the needle. The Mercedes needed to be a little bit further over and Jarno Kausch nearly got, uh, nearly collected that Mercedes going through into the Andretti hairpin. That was ever so close, but now the Alex Kopsov needs to get out of the way. That is not, you can't start defending now because that's not a defence for position, but this is bringing Fabian Pife into the fight for Team Fordzilla Lexus. This is going into turn five. Fabian Pife will not plant it around the outside there, will he? No, he doesn't. He decides to hold back, wait for the next opportunity into the left-hander here at turn six onto the Ray House straight up the hill we go heading towards the corkscrew this is going to be nip and tuck between the pair of, uh, of these two drivers and you can see as we ride on board with Fabian Pife he has to wait bide his time Jarno Karish going defensive because he knows that he's not going to get past cops off before the exit of turn nine and Pife is right all over the back of him down through into T10 now the left-hander at turn 11. If Pife gets a good run on Jarno Kausch, he'll have an opportunity coming out of the final corner. Kopsov finally gets out of the way. Or does he? The Porsche towards the outside. The Lexus goes through there too. And Fabian Pife trying to put it around the outside, going through turn one. Now into the Andretti hairpin. The French driver absolutely menacing. And he's not given Kausch an opportunity to breathe. That was great, great driving from those two drivers to circumnavigate their way through the corkscrew, get past Alex Kopsov and still keep their battle well and truly alive. Uh, it was a little bit long for Kopsov trying to get out of the way there, but uh, he was certainly defending from his own positions actually because you saw the M Mercedes and the Ferrari behind were both battles for position as far as he was concerned. Uh, Bit Musky uh, as well as uh, Di Oliveira and uh, Proletti who's now involved as well uh, in that trade. He's managed to remove himself from that because he defended, well didn't defend from these guys, but he did wait a, a fairly long time before letting them through. Big slide! For Karsha, now is this the opportunity for Pife? No, he just gave the tap to the Porsche there, coming through the corkscrew, decided that it would not be the smartest thing to do a bump and run at any stage in the race, never mind right now. So he just lifts off ever so slightly, lifts out of it and decides to just wait for another opportunity, which surely is coming. He's applying so much pressure that surely, that, uh, surely Karsha is going to reach breaking point at some point. Yeah, I think there'll be that unforced error that uh, Fabian Pife will instigate and Jano Kausch will uh, unwillingly oblige, so to speak. Probably in his subconscious he'll go, oh, I've made a mistake. And then it'll be too, it'll be, it'll, it'll be uh, 
be too little too late and, and then Pife will get past but Pife has done a really really good a really really good job with uh, Jeremy Lefile who took the first stint 14 Ford Zill Alexis we have one hour and 44 minutes and 23 seconds completed uh, so uh, still plenty of opportunity for drivers to get move forward the strategy calls to be implemented but at the moment the team that is leading the way let's see if we can have a look at the live team standings for the uh, endurance cup season three by thrustmaster so it has changed because of the efforts from Eamon Murphy and Yaroslav Honsik who get this started 18th they're now third on the road they are currently 20 points behind Ladislav Rosnev's pairing of Yaroslav Shevatolov uh, and Igor Ogorodnikov who lead on lap number 76. Odox Motorsport that have Gerard Martinez and Mayer round out the top six on the road and will uh, be third in the championship. Good showing by Team Fordzilla Lexus, who were fifth coming into this round. They currently sit fourth, at but level on points by virtual drivers by TX3, the triple three Nissan, which has Alexandre Roman behind the wheel. They currently sit in ninth place. And there is Julien Henault battling away with the 192 of uh, Niels van der Kekelt from Racing Line Motorsports. As Henault from Belgium looks up the inside of the Dutch driver, the Flying Dutchman. The Porsche runs a little bit wide going through the Andretti hairpin. Side by side they go into the approach oh. into T3. Oh, a little bit of a door rub there. Cheeky door rub. Well, that was more than a door rub there, Niels van der Kekelt, I must admit. But... Henault did not go flying exit stage left off track, uh, but still keeps the position for the minute. A bit of a door slam, wasn't it really, going towards turn three there. But uh, fortunately, Hedo was able to gather things up quite nicely and keep things on the road. It's a good exit off of turn five as well. Surely not. He's going to stick it down the inside into turn six. Oh, that's so close between the two of them. Somehow they both keep it on the road. And here's Van Omen going to go through the middle of them. Three wide going towards the no, corner. That's not going to get them. He's going to get them both, is he? Oh, no, that's the other... You're right, that's the leader. That was Egon, that was Egon. Oh, Egon got through. My goodness. Yeah, you're right, Van der Koek out there going across to... Sorry, I thought that was a, a beautiful double overtake, but it wasn't. Uh, it's totally ruined by trying to fought as well. But, uh, but yeah, the leader, Ogorodnikov, no fear whatsoever. He sees two battling cars, and they're being quite aggressive with each other, really. You'd think as the race leader with nearly 40 seconds over Murphy that he might back off a little bit into that kind of situation, but he just went all guns blazing, flying into it. And uh, yeah, fortunately it paid off all right in the end, but um, yeah, it could have turned out a lot worse. Yeah, Yegon Ogorodnikov was the silent assassin, just literally threaded the eye of the needle going through between Niels van der Kekel, uh, <laughs> on that particular occasion and Henault as well. And, uh, oh, we've had the triple one car, the DC Sim Racing McLaren. That car's not been, and that's Joey uh, Thaysen's uh, behind the wheel of that car. Uh, they've had a race that they really, really will be forgetting about, and that will be like water under the bridge very, very quickly indeed. But uh, we still have the battle between Fabian Piffet and Jano Kausch. Uh, Jan Willem van Ommen now behind the wheel of the triple eight Coach Dave Academy car piloted along with Darren King. Uh, they've made a resurgence to come back to 13th position after what has been a bit of a trialling race for the Triple uh, Eight car, uh, but is trying to close in on the battle between Hinault and Vanderke Kell, uh, who literally both got banzai uh, well, it's literally Igor Okorodnikov banzai between the pair of them, and of all places to do it, through the corkscrew. I mean, myself and David Christie, we always we always like it when he goes out on the track, but to see that kind of brazen move to lap two particular cars that are battling for position, that's the sign of ruthless aggression. And Igor has been very, very upfront and, and honest about the fact that I need to improve. But to showcase skills like that, and uh, you can... Oh, and Fabian Pifé, he's got the dog done! Oh, that was brilliantly done by Fabian Pifay. He's got past Jano Kausch, and that he put it to the outside of the Porsche, 
through the corkscrew. I've never seen that happen before, but I wasn't at all surprised that Fabian Pivet would go for an audacious outside overtake. I've seen him do one at Suzuka, now I've seen him do it at the corkscrew at Laguna. Yeah, it was a very, very good move indeed for, for what we called of it. Anyway, there's just the end of it, but uh, certainly you have to uh, have done a very impressive manoeuvre to be able to overtake through there. So, um, yeah, it's finally through now. And let's not forget, that's going to be a battle for the final spot on the podium when Ferrari comes in to make his final driver change. Admittedly, he's driving very quickly at the moment and um, that he's extending that gap quite a lot. So maybe, just maybe, he could still get a podium out of this, but it's still going to be very, very difficult for him to do so. We'll, tr we'll try and uh, see if he does or not, but a little bit further back, battles are still continuing on. That's uh, This is the... Uh, I know earlier who we saw a little bit earlier on going side by side with uh, Van der Kuckelt, but um, I know came, came out on top on this occasion, and Klinkmuller is now just in front of him. Not really recovered from that uh, penalty we saw a little bit earlier on. Leon Atoki was started that car. Let's not forget running inside the top five or so. But Klinkmuller always oh, has a car off on the outside line. One of the Bentleys there. I'm not entirely sure which one. 106 car. Uh, off the road there on uh, the exit of uh, that corner that's the Omega E Racing team uh, so they're back going again but um, yeah but Klinkmuller, Klinkmuller excuse me, really hasn't recovered that well uh, uh, certainly not as well as I was expecting and now he's getting under pressure quite violently now actually from uh, Heno in this crazy ball of traffic they've found themselves in yeah back market traffic really coming in to the ball here and blue flags waving and plenty Courtesy of the virtual marshals here at Laguna Seca, Julian Henault, that will probably be, I would say, maybe the, the DC sim racing car that was in the trenches a little bit earlier on. You've also got the number 80, uh, Aston Martin, that's the GTR Masters Hungarian endurance team just up ahead. And then I think that is the number 17 just up ahead as well. Uh, that was the uh, Team Ford Select APM car. Julian Henel trying to get through on the triple one, gets the job done nice and easily there. Daniel Di Oliveira battling away. This is with uh, Poiletti uh, in the 194 and the 35 relinquishes the position there. Henel now trying to close in on Klinkmüller, who's now trying to get past the number 80. So this is where the real strategy comes into play. You've got to Look at what you're doing, reference back marker traffic. And Klinkmuller is going to have to try and get past the number 80 and the number 17 rather rapidly. They go through turn six up the hill. Now this is where you want to just play your cards right. You don't want to take any unnecessary risks. And uh, Klinkmuller does not want to take a risk going through into the corkscrew. Whereas Hanor was looking rather racy just behind. There's Jan Ville and Van Ormen. Closing on, on Niels van der Kikel, and you can see that the gaps are closing. Because these drivers are now stuck in traffic, where you've got the likes of Klinkmüller and Heno line astern for 10th and 11th respectively. Van der Kikel has got to dispatch the 111 just up ahead to close in on the two in front. And so will, uh, the same be said, for Jan Villen van Ommen in the triple eight. And we are fast coming to another set of pit stops probably in the next 10 minutes or so because Igor Ogorodnikov on lap 82 has been behind the, of the wheel of that Aston Martin for just shy of 53 minutes and uh, he'll probably be out for maybe stay another couple of laps or was, will he do the same as uh, Shevardolov did on the first stint as there's uh, Klinkman are now finally hopefully getting past the number 80 car the Aston Martin and oh, oh, oh and no, nearly tries to go around the outside through turn five, but thinks better of it. Closes up to the back bumper of the 80, now into turn six. The 80 lets the number seven get past. And uh, yeah, this is gonna keep, this is gonna be basically uh, seeing people maybe bite their fingernails to the quick here, Ewan. Yeah, it's uh, certainly a very nervy place on the, uh, on the track to be, really. There's a lot of traffic. Um, going on as there's another crash I'm afraid for the triple one it, with a with the 106 involved as well um, so that was a brief yellow flag coming out of turn six there but uh, they're, they're back going again now 
but uh, yeah there's just battles going on all over the circuit and these clumps of traffic everywhere as well that are affecting those battles lots of penalties and time penalties and things you can see on the left hand side of your screen to figure out as well that's going to change a lot of positions but uh, yeah it's just crazy out there everywhere you look there are battles going on including this one for 30th position between uh, Dan Daniele Flores and uh, Niles there who previously held it for uh, the, the the very nice purple colour um, in the uh, in the Bentley but as uh, Michele Nerby has got a penalty here for the GTWR team really not a good day for those guys and uh, yeah the, the five seconds to those guys but the, the penalties uh, the, that uh, have uh, recently come in the last few moments the 217 has been given a drive through penalty um, so that's going to have to have, uh, have to serve that in the next few moments but uh, yeah this battle just outside the top 10 still going on and uh, yeah it's about from 10th down to 14th really that's uh, how close they are it's uh, not many cars separating them either really there's penalties coming in but also battles continuing out there as well yeah it seems like the Fabio Piffet uh, fan club has now hit the chat as well they're saying podium still is target well it's there's still just over an hour to go so we've got an hour and four minutes and 41 seconds still remaining on the clock and uh, Julian Hennel gets past the number 17 of Team Fordzilla APN. Uh, coming out of the final corner, that puts the car between Hennel and Van der Kerkelt uh, in the battle for 11th position. But Van der Kerkelt looks to be uh, getting a little bit quicker. Was a, just shy of a tenth quicker on that last lap alone. And uh, it is now rather getting interesting as to who is going to be closing in to where. Fabian Pifay at the moment is about half a second off of Eamon Murphy in terms of pure lap pace. Uh, so uh, it is down to how well you can serve your tyres. The track temperature has now rocketed up to 26 degrees Celsius. Here at Laguna Seca, it's the midway point of season three of the Endurance Cup by Thrustmaster live here on the sim grid and uninterrupted it's also uh, sponsored by simsoc uh, as well our uh, new partners on board don't forget if you want to get your affiliate deal with expressvpn head to expressvpn.com forward slash the sim grid sign up for a 12-month agreement and courtesy of that affiliate link you'll get three months absolutely free and uh Heno still trying to close in on klinkmuller at the meantime, looking at the uh, drivers that are currently out on the circuit at the moment, Ogorodnikov has one of the, well, actually, I'm just seeing that the 995, Jonas van Droyten, uh, is one of the uh, drivers that has stayed out the longest. He's been just in that 995 McLaren, the ambassadors for Henvels, and with Marco Bischoff, he's been in that car for just over uh, an hour at this particular moment in time and he has handed over to Bischoff but we fast approach the final third the last 60 minutes the golden hour uh, so to speak and battles are still waging up and down the order Van der Kerkel is in the pits uh, Thaysons in the pits uh, Daniele Floris battling away with Daniele Branchini uh, Giacomo Pro uh, Proiletti uh, battling away with uh, well that was a back market that was trying to get through but Amos Lorito is closing in and there we go the first green square for driver changes on round three and that is uh with the nine the 192 racing line car that has galin dimov now behind the wheel and will bring the car home ogorodnikov still leading on lap number 85 of this race and it's been in the car for nearly 58 minutes so probably in the next two to three laps, probably would expect Ogorodnikov to come in the pits and hand back over to Yaroslav uh, Shevardolov uh, for the final stint. But this way, at this particular moment, it will look to be two wins out of three for Lada Sport Rosneft. We still have just over an hour remaining. Things are still very much not set in, set in stone, Ewan O'Leary. No, they're definitely not. They've set a lot that can go wrong if we look look back and remember the first pit stop window of this race it was totally madness uh, i mean two of the uh, race leading cars or, or, or potential race winning cars i guess as well didn't 
had issues. I remember the 32 car spinning on the entry to pit, uh, pit lane after getting hit uh, in the rear. And then uh, we also had uh, Ferrari not having a driver change. It means they're going to have to do uh, you know, two extra pit or an extra pit stop compared to the rest. So is this car actually, the John Lacey Esports Academy car, because Amos Larito has done the first two hours of this race and Martin Darland is still going to get into that car yet. Um, but uh, they've also got to be careful that Larito doesn't extend his uh, driving limit, which is also going to be a factor. Um, so uh, he's got to be careful of that. As uh, the leader comes into the pit lane now, Igor Ogorodnikov gets into the pit lane and is going to be getting out of that car as well because he has to uh, at this point unless he wants to make an extra pit stop so uh, he's just going to hit his marks make sure that nothing goes wrong and uh, they'll they'll be well on their way to winning but it's easier said than done we've seen it at the last pit stop window how things can go wrong and how quickly they can go wrong so you've always got to stay aware indeed you've got to have your eyeballs on stalks and i've just heard that DC Sim Racing .nl, the 111 McLaren, have now officially become our fourth retirement. So we still have 33 cars running. And uh, Shevardov now replaces Ogorodnikov in the number 41 Lada Sport Rosneft Aston Martin Racing V8 Vantage GT3. We've completed 86 laps of this 2.238 mile road course here in Monterey, California. We are now into the final 60 minutes and uh, Bastian Lindner now has replaced Yannick Hoff in the 100 good time racing Audi R8 LMS Evo. And apart from Shevardov, they are the second highest placed uh, car that has now completed their full round of pit stops. Jan Villen van Ommen gets back into the pit lane uh, in the 11th place triple eight car and has just spent 50 nearly 57 minutes in that vehicle so i would imagine he's going to hand back over to darren king or will james parker get into the vehicle they can use three drivers if they so opt to here on the three hour endurance races okay well um but whilst we've got an opportunity, let's bring in Niels van der Kerkelt, a regular here on the Sim Grid. Niels, um, that was a very interesting stint for yourself in the midway point of the race, battling away uh, with the number seven car of uh, Hinault from Virtual Drivers by TX3. But uh, it's been an interesting one for you and Ma uh, Marco, Marco Macri so far. Hey guys, yeah, um, yeah, it's been uh, it's been quite eventful. Um, I have to say, I don't really enjoy Laguna that much but uh, I think we were doing pretty well um, and then yeah uh, you know two incidents with the same team happened um, the stewards have given their, their judgment on it um, I don't really agree with it but you know it's uh, it is what it is but yeah very eventful um, it's feeling like uh, I'm in California right now in my room because it's it's quite hot in the Netherlands today so <laughs> yeah uh, it's the same here for the United Kingdom as well, my friend. So I completely understand and sympathise. <laughs> um, but, but but obviously qualifying, we need to we, we need to sort of have a look back at that. Um, you know, it was it was very very tricky. I mean, you were three just point three 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 off of pole position set by Michele Nerbi, and you guys still started down in seventeenth. Did you? I mean, we expected qualifying was going to be close. We didn't expect on how close it was going to be here at Laguna. Yeah, it's a shame that um, that you know being only three tenths off is uh, is is P17. But um, you know, to be fair, I'm actually quite happy with the qualifying I did. Normally, I'm uh, I'm not really that great with qualifying, but uh, I was actually pretty happy with the lap I put in. I still had some time in in the last lap, but uh, I messed that up unfortunately. But uh, yeah, you know, without any preparation for this race. I think uh, P17 was okay, um, but it's just always so hard on this track to uh, to then you know do something, especially in the Porsche. We've got absolutely no top speed, <laughs> like no top speed at all. So yeah, it was all about you know trying to stay out of trouble as much as possible, which I guess worked out brilliantly until uh, the instance uh, with the TX3 cars. But you know, apart from that, we've we've been doing a, a pretty solid job in. You know steadily gaining some positions because of other people's wrongdoings so 
Yeah, let's see what the, the last hour brings. Um, we had some uh, technical issues with, with Galen, who's in the car now, so let's hope everything stays okay and, uh, well, we'll see where we end up. Okay, thank you very much, Niels van der Kikel, the 192 Racing Line Motorsport Porsche. Niels, all the very best of uh, luck to you and uh, Marco and uh, Galen for uh, the remainder of the race. Uh, thank you very much, Alex. Always a pleasure. Good day. So good to hear there, you and from Niels van der Kikel, obviously, uh, you know, oh, now as well, I just said that, oh my goodness. He did say that there were technical problems with Galen Dimov, and now we just had a repeat of what happened to Deepers in the Porsche, and that is uh, at the midpoint of the corkscrew. Yeah, nobody's um, going to want to come for an interview anymore, are they, because of that? No. No, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not taking the blame for that one. I can blame Niels for that, because... I, I, I'm just basically going to say, Niels, put that you, you put that on yourself, buddy. Um, <laughs> but that's the thing, you know. He, he wanted to come down for an interview. It's just coincidence. Um, but the, he, yeah, I mean, he he was asked. He said, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll come down. But the thing is, is that it wasn't him behind the wheel. God, thank goodness. Um, but you can just see how close that qualifying was. Um, and I've just seen that Lindner in the 100 Good Time Racing, uh, I think things are coming to a head now, Ewan. Oh yeah, some kind of issue for him coming out of turn six there, I don't know what that was all about, but he's back going again now. Um, we've also had some driver changes uh, for uh, Giremetti, who's now in the car that Ferrari was driving. Uh, so he's got to, to do 45 minutes in this race. Uh, to comply with the fair share rule, but they've also got to change drivers twice as this battle continues on our screens. That means that with less than 10 minutes to go, they're going to have to do a driver change, and I can't help but cringe at how inefficient that is, really, in terms of a strategy. I'm not sure that's how they planned it, really, because um, it seems so illogical to do that that I, I, can't, even, I can't even understand why you would. Um, so they, they must have forgotten to change uh, drivers, you know, a, a few misclick, as we were mentioning, uh, earlier, you know, just a couple of misclicks and, uh, 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 you know, settings not selected, etc. Um, means that uh, it's, it's had a catastrophic um, effect on their race uh, and it really is going to hurt them uh, throughout this race and uh, and beyond. So, um, yeah, that's uh, it's, it's a real shame to see for them, but uh, the rules are the rules and you have to do what you have to do. And so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a very, very... Uh, frustrating final 10 minutes as they realize that second place is going to slip away from them although it remains to be seen where they're going to come out i'm not totally convinced they're out of the question for a podium here yeah well stranger things have happened we've had a brief yellow out um just seen that axel petit uh in the 934 triple a esports virtual drivers by tx3 entry has just pitted as has uh sandro uh, petro uh petro cielo uh, there's been another incident for Linda, who's now dropped to 14th place behind James Parker, who's taken uh, over in the Coach Dave Academy Aston Martin from Jan Villen van Ommen. Uh, but at the moment, uh, ah, okay, right. Previous championship leaders, well, championship leaders coming into this round, Odox Motorsport in the pits, uh, Gerard Martinez Amer uh, has now pitted. Okay, so we're going to see an incident, this uh, repeat. This is going through into turn six. Bastian Lindner, he's run a bit wide, he's just got it on the dirt. Talent's oh. kicked out. Oh, and he nearly collected the Ferrari there from Jean Lacey Esports in the process there as well. Bastian Lindner, you are one very uh, lucky individual, and I think the Ferrari driver, whoever was piloting that Ferrari, uh, would have said, worse the effect of Mamma Mia, and then probably had a Code Brown moment right there and then. It was very, 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 very close as well. Uh, to disaster, really. So, uh, yeah, blimey. Uh, he much somehow managed to get away with it. And, uh, yeah, everybody can get... I think it was Martin Dyland, actually, in the John Lacey Esports car. Um, although I'm not entirely sure. It looks similar. Um, and it was one of the Ferraris, certainly. But uh, this is uh, another one of the Ferraris on the back of Flores for uh, 20th position uh, in the race right now. We'll see if there's a, a, a move from uh, Nerby. Let's not forget this car was right up there at the front of the uh, at the start of this race excuse me but not so much up there anymore not even inside the top 20 i'm afraid um so uh, yeah they've got a lot of issues to recover from 
and they've still got a driver change to make in this race under five second penalty it's just uh, not going well for them at the moment but yeah, the uh, yeah, they, yeah. they're going to oh, sorry they're, go, they're going to want to get inside the top 20 at the very least because uh, it, they want something to show for the pace they've had today yeah and um yeah i mean uh, the thing is that uh there is a uh, maxime chasse uh closing in on now rene siva so siva has now taken over from uh, niles uh, klinkmuller uh, with um, Leon Otoki actually doing qualifying and the first stint, so here's the battle for P9. And there, oh, this is heated up because look who's behind, James Parker in the triple eight from Coach Dave Academy. Now, obviously, uh, earlier on, Darren King qualified the current P8, had that drive through, then there was a five second time penalty. They have got themselves into what could potentially be maybe even a top nine finish here and you can see that Parker um, who partnered Charlie Crossland in Send It Racing in Sprint Cup Season 3 all over the back of Maxime Chassis in the number seven and he's going for the move up the inside through into turn 11 he's got him on the brakes that's a great move from James Parker the Triple Eight Coach Dave Academy car now up into P8 but Chasse not exactly wanting to relinquish that position without a fight. They go over the crest through turn one into the Andretti hairpin. But Maxime Chasse, oh no, there's a bit of a run wide there from Parker as he goes deep into the braking zone, but he keeps the Aston Martin ahead. And Maxime Chasse uh, has just literally lost his opportunity to get that place back from James Parker. Yeah, so very, very close to the pit wall going down the uh, down the straight there. But uh, yeah, they've man managed to keep it on the straight and narrow. Very interesting to see, though, that even though these strategies have come to the fore now and they, they, it's effectively over in terms of the strategies, that they're still coming out of the pit lane together and the fights are still on up and down this field. And uh, yeah, that's what's going to keep us interested for the last 50 minutes or so of this race. The battle's inside the top six. That's for ninth, by the way that one that's all going on. This is for 15th at the moment. The Porsche in the foreground is for 14th, but kind of getting away at the moment with the Dimov we saw uh, a little bit earlier on having that spin at the corkscrew. I don't know if he's falling backwards or uh, he's refound himself a little bit and he's going forwards again, but um, we'll have to wait and see. It looks like he's going forwards again, actually. It looks like he's recovered well. Um, but uh, Bertan and uh, Burkle, oh, but Bertan and Burkle battling together, um, which seems quite fitting. Uh, but this is for 15th place. Lexus versus um, Aston Martin. And uh, yeah, we'll see who comes out on top of the, for, the, for the... Oh, my word. Oh. Big spin for Vinnie Oliveira. And uh, it's another Ferrari going for a spin, I'm afraid. They seemingly had a lot of issues. And another car with a problem, I'm afraid, coming out of turn four. Yeah, new penalty has just been issued for contact on lap 82. Uh, between cars 194. That was... Uh, Roy Letty uh, in the uh, Racing Line Motorsport Mercedes and the 27 Jean Alesi uh, Esports Academy Ferrari gets a 15 second time penalty. So that Ferrari will have a 15 second time penalty. Now I'm just going to have a look and see. There is the updated standings in real time because now the gap between first, second, and third has shrunk to 20 points. So Lada Sport Rosneft in the 41 and 136. Yazid Richard Mille in the 149 as uh, Bertin goes a little bit wide through turn six and Burkel manages to get through. And that's for 15th position going into the corkscrew. Odox Motorsport in third place. So the title fight really heating up. Virtual drivers by TX3 in the triple three ran at the top four and Team Fortilla Lexus. Uh, currently in fifth place which is where they came into this midway point of the season so that is a 54 point spread over the top five and if memory serves me correctly that is five different manufacturers so Aston Martin, Ferrari, Audi, Nissan and Lexus this particular round of the Endurance Cup season three by Thrustmaster uh, so at the moment, uh, Yaroslav Shevatolov uh, uh, leads the way 
ahead of the 446 of SFR Italia's Patrick Girometti. I'm going to go to a replay now and oh, spin. Oh, that was a 720 was right there. That was brilliant, I was wasn't way, it? I, 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 I was sort of thinking that's the that's the um, that's the GT3 equivalent of uh, Tony Hawk trying to do a 1080 and only coming up with a 720. Um, but that was impressive. Control just let it spin and caught it at the end and got it back going again. That that just shows how much control is used in sim racing. We've got a battle going on for P9 here. The uh, four car battle is uh, continuing on. BMW defending from Aston Martin and. There's a Mercedes involved as well, but look at that straight line speed from the BMW. The Aston Martin just doesn't have it into Term 2, so they stick behind each other for the moment. That Linda's not too far behind either, but let's not forget he had those couple of issues in the last few laps, so he might be recovering from that ever so slightly and not quite able to get onto the back of these guys at the moment. Just depends how quickly he composes himself after that, really. But uh, let's see, is Parker going to go for it? It into turn five. Nope, sticks behind just for the moment. A sensible choice, really. I think it's been a great drive from this Triple Eight Coach Dave Academy car, though, because let's not forget how many issues they've had so far in this race. They've had a drive through for an incident caused on lap three. They had another five second penalty as well, I believe, to add on to their uh, pit stop as well. So, uh, you know, they've had a couple of issues, a good couple of issues in this race, but they've fought back from all of them. They're inside the top ten right now, and I think that's a great result for them as things stand. Yeah, I completely agree with that sentiment there, Ewan, because they, they've gone for damage limitation, but the thing is now, oh, René Sivert, a little bit out of shape coming out of Rainey's, and you can see now that James Parker puts the car to the outside, that opens the door for Maxime Chassé, oh, that was close between the Mercedes and the Aston Martin, but Sivert gets the power down early, coming out of turn 11 at this circuit, down through the gap, Again, the onboard roof cam. You can see the Maxim Chassé sticking his nose up the inside of the Aston Martin through into the Andretti hairpin. James Parker says, no, you are not coming past. You've got to try and do it the right way. Try not to send it like Danny Rick. Uh, so James Parker now starting to pull away. The torque between, the torque differential between the 4-litre twin-turbo Aston Martin V8 and the 6.2 litre naturally aspirated V8 in the front of that long snouted Mercedes is around 50 newton meters uh, in terms of torque application so the Aston can have a slight better pickup than the Mercedes but the BMW out of this trio here uh, just looking by the stats that I have the BMW actually has the biggest deficit when it comes to torque um, so it's pretty much equal on uh, it's 585 brake horsepower and 550 newton meters of torque and I think as René Sivert quite literally pointed out that the BMW is a bit of a tank he's not half wrong but he's still doing a fantastic job soaking up all the pressure coming from both James Parker and Maxime Chassé in the battle for ninth position as we have just 42 minutes and 40 seconds to go yeah, not long left for these guys to sort it out and uh, it doesn't look like these guys are going to sort it out to, until the very, very final minutes really uh, because you just see how close it is. They're not really able to separate themselves uh, from each other. No, 10th and 11th, they're battling over. It looks like Linda's not going to get on terms at the moment and uh, might even have more trouble from behind really. Uh, we'll wait and see. But uh, yeah, there's battles going on all over really. Um, it's hard to know where to look at the moment. The final few positions are being settled. Uh, but uh, no, but no real attacks being made by James Parker on this occasion, and still that 14 car after those issues we saw uh, a little bit earlier, they're not really able to recover. Which is, uh, I was, I was really expecting them to. As a spin for the 99, that's another car who's that has been really in trouble this entire season, uh, entire uh, day, excuse me. But Germans, I'm afraid, have uh, spun again. And it's out in 32nd. I think that's the last running car, actually. And, uh, yeah, they're right down there anyway. Uh, I'm, so, uh, I'm somewhat... Uh, uh, I admire them for carrying on. Because they are really so far behind everybody else. And uh, they're having such an awful day that you'd almost expect them to retire at this point. But they haven't retired. They've carried on. They're soldiering on regardless. But they're just not... It's just not been their day. 
No, it's been far from their day. It's been uh, the uh, drive of shame, unfortunately, for the 99 car uh, in this particular instance. The um, so so Dumov and Burkle now pretty much getting side by side, and uh, Burkle could get the run on the 192 from Racing Line Motorsport heading into the Andretti hairpin. Well, just literally gets past the Porsche initially, uh, like it's standing still then this could uh, allow the door to be open for Bertin. Oh, and going through into turn three, Galindimov should hopefully have the run on the on the Lexus. And the Lexus, oh, they rub paint coming out of turn three. But Galindimov stays resolute, stays ahead of the Lexus, but unfortunately couldn't keep the 53. Um, and that is the uh, Leipzig Esports car of Timo Berkel. Uh, behind uh, along the straightaway because as soon as you let that Aston Martin loose coming out of turn 11 you head down to the Andretti Heppen at turn 2 uh, no one's going to really sort of give you the opportunity to to get across the front bumper of it and stay in front going into the apex of the corner yeah they were they were mentioned and, uh, if you remember when uh, it, Niels yeah. came to talk to us that Porsche had terrible straight line speed and that's got to be hurting them at this point with the likes of the Aston Martin and the Lexus, which looks like it's about to get through into the penultimate corner, looking one way, going to have to maybe look the other into the final corner, not able to for the moment. But I think we're going to get a good demonstration of what really meant by it when we were going down the front straight. Because I can't say I noticed it personally. I can't say I noticed the Porsche being uh, poor in a straight line, but we might be able to see it right now as they come down the straight. The Lexus gaining, gaining, gaining down into the hairpin. Is he close enough? No, not quite. Very good under brakes. He was really able to diamond off the corner there. Was Dimov a little bit wide through the middle, but no space through from Bertan. So decent defending, but it, it can certainly be seen visually that that Porsche is a little bit weaker on that straight. Yeah. So we are about to, well, we're on lap 101, which at the moment will mean that we'll have completed over 226.04 miles of this circuit with Yaroslav uh, Shevardolov uh, leading the way for Lada Sport Rosneft, who will look to go into the penultimate round of the season at the Castellet on the 3rd of July, the nine hours of Paul Ricard as the new championship leaders. They will level on points, let's not forget, with Odox Motorsport, who now have Alberto Garcia back behind the wheel. Uh, two seconds behind the 911 of GTRC's Robert Pogardel uh, in the Porsche, as we ride on board with James Parker ever so briefly. Uh, Konstantinos Kontoyanis uh, from uh, Greek Suvlaki squad still right circulating, and uh, they are just behind the number 80 GTR Masters Hungarian endurance team. That's uh, Tamas Lanyi behind the wheel of the uh, number 80 Aston Martin Vantage V8. Uh, Blotto back in the pits in the 194 Racing Line Motorsport car. That's had uh, its trials and tribulations here today as Girometti uh, in the SFR Italia Lexus RCF GT3 started on the inside of row two. And we went green just over two hours, 20 minutes and 22 minutes and 30 seconds ago been up at the sharp end. Uh, René Siva still battling away with coach David Academy's James Parker. James Parker really trying to stick the nose up the inside through turn 10 and still with them is Maxime Chassé as the pair nearly rubbed wing panels coming out to turn 11 and that has allowed Maxime Chassé to go side by side with James Parker down the main straightaway. It's Aston Martin versus Mercedes and Maxime Chassé has got the run going into the Andretti hairpin ahead of James Parker and takes 10th position away from the Triple Eight of Coach Dave Academy. Wow. Very good move. Very good opportunistic driving. Just watching those two in front of him. Uh, and then when the mistake came, he went for it. But Parker's going to go for it again into turn four. God, that's close between the two of them. But they've just about kept it clean. And side by side between the two. The Sebo's going to be loving this because it means that he can get up into the distance. But Jassé is not done yet in terms of defending. Parker is going to come back at him. 
into turn six, but he's not going to dive it here because it's way too high speed for that. And now maybe he can get run, run through the corner. He's so close to the Mercedes. Is he going to get through? He's off on the oh, off the circuit, up the inside into the corkscrew. Oh, and he's not able to do it. Thought he was actually going to send it there, but he decides not to. Chasse is under an unbelievable amount of pressure at the moment, but the gap, the battle they're having is just allowing Seaver to get away. Parker is desperate not to give up this 10th place though. Just look at this. Into the hairpin they go again. He's on the outside line again. He's going to go for the cutback and it's a carbon copy of last lap, only in reverse. This particular occasion, James Parker not able to get the momentum coming out of it because Maxime Chasse just literally planted that Mercedes-Benz on the apex of turn 11 and decided to put the hammer down. James Parker, I think, scrabbled for a little bit of rear-end traction there on the Aston Martin, but great battling between the pair of them. And as they say, never give an inch and never take a mile. And that's exactly what we've seen between these two right here. Um, but the, the thing is now we're coming into the last 35 minutes of this race it has been an absolutely brilliant uh, dynamic addition to season three of the endurance cup by thrustmaster here live on the sim grid a big thank you to you all that have stayed with us throughout the entire race distance so far we still have oh as again parker nearly goes off the track trying to look up the inside of maxime chasse you know what is even more interesting? Look who's lurking in the distance. Bastian Lindner from Good Time Racing. Whilst these two are battling away, the 100 Audi has now got the ringside seat. Could there be a possibility that Bastian Lindner and Yannick Hoff, they could get a top 10 if something happens with the two in front? And as always, Ewan, in motorsport, there is true unpredictability. And that's what I love about it. Yeah, it's very, very close now with Lindner involved. I said not a few laps ago that Lindner was not in this conversation anymore for a top 10 because of the issues that he'd had. He went off twice in a couple of laps and thought he wasn't going to recover from that, but he clearly has. And now he's looking at maybe getting a top 10 in this. I don't think he's got quite the outright speed of Chasse or indeed Parker in front. However, he can definitely battle his way into 10th place if indeed he gets the opportunity. And if Chassé and Parker have a battle like they did a couple of laps ago, then there's every reason why he, he or, or there's no reason why he can't get involved, should I say, um, getting into this battle because uh, just look at the way they are nose to tail at the moment. Parker just would, would look to any overtaking opportunity to get through at the moment. He would dive down the inside anywhere at this stage with just over half an hour to go. It is so, so close. A little bit wide from Chasse that occasion. And now Parker around the outside through the rainy curve. Is that going to be enough? No, not quite. Look at the way Chasse just muscles him out there. No chance for Parker to get through. And now he's going to have to uh, try again, really. But he's going for these cutbacks quite often into the final couple of corners. But uh, the, the Aston Martin doesn't seem to have the acceleration to be out of that final corner. To really give it a go. He's got a good slipstream now though and might give it a go into turn two this time. No. No, but it gets a bit closer to Chassé through the braking zone because sometimes, uh, as now, Chassé goes a little bit wide on the approach into turn three. And Henry Siva now is, let's just have a look, he's three seconds up the road. Siva has got that car into P9. It could have been a top five for Unicorns of Love had it not been for that drive-through penalty a little bit earlier on. But things could further change because Patrick Girometti from SFR Italia has yet to put the, bring that Lexus back in to try and uh, solidify a fairly decent finish for the Lexus piloting crew. And it looks like the 22 of... Uh, Blotto from Racing Line uh, Motorsport, and, uh, that is Matteo Blotto, uh, has, that's, that car has been in the pits for quite a time, uh, I'll be completely honest with you there, but James Parker, one of the things that we're trying to do all these cutbacks, um, you know, whether that is actually hampering the degradation on the tyres on that Aston Martin, that says to me that if, if you're trying to do all these cutbacks, you're going to, unfortunately, 
lose a little bit of um, of rubber every so often when that car scrubs its tyres from left to right. If you're doing the, if you're trying to do a cutback on on someone that you're battling with, and you're also taking the life out of those tyres when you're trying to put the power down, and they just spool up. Yeah, it's uh, it doesn't seem to be working at the moment for James Parker certainly, and uh, as that effect starts to really take shape, it's uh, it's not going to work even more. It's going to be even more convincing. Um, so uh, yeah, it's uh, it's difficult at the moment, but Alberto Costa right now is uh, having a decent race. To be fair to him, started 20th, I think it was, right down the order uh, for Odox Motorsport. Championship leaders coming in here. Let's not forget having won the first race of the season and got third last time out at Monza. It looks like it might well be another top five here today, but um, he might be. Uh, let's see if he can pull it off or not. Um, really. It's going to be a, a close run thing, um, but uh, but we'll wait and see. It's, uh, it's it's still going to mean he's going to give up the championship lead. He's going to give up second place in the championship as well um, to uh, Honzik and uh, his teammate, of course, uh, for the Yas Heat car. So they are going to drop to third in this championship, but all is not lost, certainly. They've not lost very many points, points at all. And, uh, yeah, considering they started 20th, I think Ogotch Motorsport can be fairly pleased with how it went. Yeah. Just about to hit the final 30 minutes on the clock remaining here at Laguna Seca. We head to the penultimate round of Season 3 at Paul Ricard, Le Castellet, for the nine-hour race on July the 3rd uh, for the Endurance Cup Season 3. And then the finale will be on the 24th of July at Monza. And that will be a three-hour race, just like we've had here at Laguna Seca and for the first round of the season back at the Hungaring but James Parker still trying to close in on Maxime Chassé for 10th position and at the moment things are not working in the favour of the 888 Coach Dave Academy car but uh, they have still been able to get themselves a little bit further back over the, up the order but Maxime Chassé takes a little bit less apex coming out of the corkscrew in comparison with James Parker, who is still, and I repeat this, still trying to get past the Mercedes, and he nearly loses the back end coming out of turn 10. That's how hard uh, the uh, that Parker is uh, pushing that, that Aston Martin. He's not giving up, is he? Well, certainly not at the moment. You can see that Chassis has kind of increased the pace as well, because the gap to Lindner has gone up to a second. Siebert now is completely gone. Three and a half seconds up the road so they can dream on about ninth place. That's gone out the window now really but tenth place is what they're both aiming for here. I bet Lindner is going to want tenth as well. There's a number of cars that are very very in very close proximity and could feel like they might be able to get there you know because uh, Depre is there as well in the 934 so uh, you never really know um, what can happen but uh, a lot of these guys are in but I reckon there's four drivers involved and only one space of course to be inside the top 10 remaining so uh, yeah these two are going after it at the moment and the pace they're showing is putting everybody else at bay but if they start battling again then things are going to close up together all over again let's see if there's a move from Parker not for the moment it's uh, there's under half an hour to go so he has got time to just bide his time but he can't wait forever and when his opportunity finally comes he does need to strike yeah, and strike whilst the iron is hot, um, as we did have a brief yellow flag. Oh, Ginometti. Ginometti was the one that... Oh, my God. Ginometti just had a massive moment down the Rahal Strait. Oh, that could have been so much worse than what it actually was. Uh, but they still have one more pit stop to make uh, before the end of this race. There's uh, Jardier, Yaroslav Honsik. Uh, coming through out of turn 9 into the right-hander at turn 10. And uh, the gap now between Girometti and Honzik is uh, nigh on nothing. It's about 3.1 seconds last time around, but they're about to cross the strike very, very soon indeed. So Honzik will have been told that there would have been a moment. And the gap now down to two seconds. And Yaroslav Honzik just put in a one-minute... Uh, what was that? That was a one-minute 23 Point zero six one. That spin for Girometti cost him the best part of nearly 20 seconds and managed to recover it. That is That just absolutely smarts like nothing when you have that kind of moment and it costs you 
uh, probably the best part of what was it a sixth of that lap had it been a, a normal a normal race lap that's an awful lot of time for a spin really 20 seconds that's a really long time for a spin as uh, yellow flag 99 I'm afraid yeah, a lot, they've been the cause of a few yellow flags here today and uh, I'm afraid that's another one to add to the list. It's not been a good day for them whatsoever and uh, there he is getting back going again here, Otten, uh, from 32nd position. He's a long way back from the rest of the field at this point, but um, yeah, it's it's been a, a good drive once again from the Ash Heat and Honzik. Looks like they're going to pick up their third second place of the season. It, uh, there's only been three races so far. They've been exceptionally consistent and you'd think with that kind of consistency they might well be leading the championship at this point but uh, they're not going to be because Lada Sport with a third, a first and a first it's looking like at the moment are going to be leading it. It's still going to remain very very close indeed though and uh, yeah uh, both of those teams have done a fantastic job here today. Once again Odox Motorsport likewise uh, they've also done a very very good job so we're starting to see three clear championship contenders. Virtual drivers by TX3 are having another decent race. Two top five so far this season. It's not quite going to be a top five again, but it is going to be another top ten at the very least. I think they are falling a little bit too far back at this point, though. There is still a long way to go in the season, but, uh, you know, only two rounds, really, which is uh, not not that long, but it is it's long. It's like, I don't really know what I'm trying to say, but, you know, it's not all over, but they're certainly outsiders at this point. It's between those three at the front. Yeah, I think realistically, even though we've got 24 and three quarter minutes in this race, this is going to feel like an absolute eternity for the drivers and their, t their teammates as well. And the biggest thing is, is that it's, as you and said earlier, it's about where you end up at the chequered flag. And at the moment, Lada Sport Rosneft are leading. Jeremetti's had an absolute mare in the final 30 minutes of this race. Uh, Yaz Heat, Richard Mill looking to solidify their intent to win this championship. Uh, but we still have uh, effectively another 12 hours of racing still to go. The nine hours of Paul Ricard on the. Uh, on the 3rd of July and then the 24th of July the three hours of Misano that will bring to a close what has been a dynamic season so, uh, and what from our perspective for the first three rounds what it has been so far but James Parker still keeping chase to Maxime Chassé and I'm just having a look at the lap times uh, between uh, Chassé and uh, René Sivart at this particular moment and Siva was slightly slower but not by much probably about uh, two ten well about a, f a few tenths of a second but you can now see that Honzik is right up the back bumper of Ginometti so Jardier wanting to make this move happen on track as opposed to it, him waiting for that Lexus to pit and that just shows that one spin can turn your race upside down it was already turned upside down when they forgot to uh, hit the button to engage the driver change in the first pit stop, which meant that um, Mirko Ferrari ended up doing the first two stints of the race. Uh, so Girometti has to now just buy, just keep on pushing forward, seeing what they can make in terms of the best out of this, in terms of a result. It's probably not going to be where they wanted because they will have wanted to get a, uh, a step on the podium. But at the meantime, we could have our fourth Ten, and I've just heard that uh, the 99 Lutz Motorsport have now officially retired. No surprise, but they ha I, I, I'll give them credit where credit is due. Despite all the incidents that they've had, Ewan, they've they'll learn from this. They'll understand what you know what they need to do next time out. Yeah, they 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 will they will learn from this and credit to them as well for carrying on anyway because uh, they were they had a, a really really bad race and uh, yeah it was uh, it was would have been very easy to retire a long time ago but uh, they, they kept at it unfortunately retiring about 20 minutes before the end but uh, you know it's uh, it's still not been um, it, it, well they still got to, uh, a good way through the race at least and would have learned a, a fair amount as, as you say um, so uh, yeah a shame to see that for them but uh, but no it just wasn't their day today really 
Uh, but uh, back up front, it well, hasn't really been the day for the 4 4 6 really either. Uh, with that driver change mix up, we saw a little bit earlier on Giometti is now in that car an hour behind schedule where he was supposed to be. And uh, now they're in second place. I'm not entirely sure how long it's going to take them for that driver change and the drive through the pit lane either, but. I expect them to, uh, well, I've been told it's going to be about a minute. So they're going to drop easily outside of the top 10, probably. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be fairly damaging. What I'm mainly focusing on is whether Yas Heat are, and uh, Odox Motorsport are going to get through. Obviously, Yas Heat are, because they're right there right now. But uh, Odox Motorsport are about 20 seconds back from that, 25 seconds back. Uh, but they are easily going to get them as well. So Odex Motorsport are going to get fifth place, um, but are they going to get fourth? They're right on the back of the 911 at the moment. Right, we're going to go for a replay. James Parker has finally got past Maxime Chassé in the number seven Mercedes. Chassé just ran wide coming out of turn seven, and that was the opportunity that James Parker needed. He said, thank you very much. So kind, opening the door like a gent. Well, no, it's because of the fact that Maxime Chassé went a bit too hot into turn six. But that is all you need. Yaroslav Honsik, Jardia closing in on Patrick Girometti. Uh, we have covered over 250 or so miles. As I've just seen, that was the Omega E Bentley Continental that was just parked uh, going in towards turn number 11. I think probably just let cars pass. It was stationary for a fractionary moment. And there has been an incident at turn one and that is going to be the uh, 34 and 18. Uh, Kontol Yiannis has been involved in that in the 34. Oh, the Greek Suvlaki squad. It seems like they don't want to find trouble. Trouble is finding them at the moment. Uh, and that is a real, real shame. Alberto Garcia, however, is closing on Robert Pogardel. We are on the verge of possibly seeing our fourth respective team hit the podium this season after three rounds and that could very well be the 66 the pairing of um, Fabien Piffet and uh, Jeremy Lefile in the 66 team Fordzilla Lexus RCF GT3 currently sitting in fourth position but Garcia and uh, Martinez Amera could very well find themselves in the top five come the end of this race as we have just under 19 minutes to go 115 laps in the books courtesy of the Lada Sport Rosneft pairing of Yaroslav uh, Shevatolov and uh, Igor Ogorodnikov still ha they they got it they, they, they got the car on the front row of the grid and Shevatolov did exactly the right thing kept it nice and clean and then everything else fell apart around them for the rest of the competition and Lada Sport Rosneft have kept themselves in the hunt for the title we did see that Igor Ogorodnikov was in competition for the title of Best of British uh, the first ever season for that happened. But uh, due to uh, taking some time off, decided to re uh, re uh, have a bit of a relaxation time away from sim racing and get himself back up to full focus. And now we're seeing a very, very more accomplished driver that we ha than we have seen previously. And he has showcased that he is capable oh. of doing the right thing. So that was close. That was between the 995 Renvelden car and the number 17 Team Fordzilla APM car. Uh, and that is Maxime Chassé saying, come on, out the way, please. You're coming through. You're not, you're not battling for position. And you can now see that Bastian Linder is now having to fight with the likes of uh, the number 17, uh, which has got behind, that is... Uh, Jeffrey uh, uh, Militinovic uh, behind the wheel of that one. Uh, we're going to go to another replay now. And this is with Consul Giannis. And this is going to be with the number 80. Oh, oh, dear. That was that messy. That was rude. That was very rude down the inside there. A difficult get going again, actually, for the Lamborghini as well. But Aston Martin just barging its way down the inside there. <coughs> Excuse me. The, uh, the aggression is sometimes something that you can use to your, your advantage very much so and it can be very effective but I'm afraid that was definitely an example of over aggression and uh, yeah straight down the inside not what you want to see at all uh, from uh, that uh, that car and uh, yeah they've uh, sorted themselves out now I'd imagine that Aston Martin will probably get a penalty for that because 
Uh, it was a fairly aggressive manoeuvre in the end, but uh, this is the Lada Sport car. Oh, it was the Lada Sport car. Out front, we've not actually seen much of it today, uh, but uh, it's been out there in the lead. Almost the inter I can't remember a lap that it hasn't led. I think it, in the second pit stop window, it did relinquish the lead, uh, and I think it, it might have done uh, f briefly in the first pit stop window yeah. as well. But other than that, they've really led every single lap. They haven't been challenged whatsoever. And uh, yeah, it's been. I'm, I'm somewhat surprised considering how close qualifying was, but then again, I'm not because I look at the two drivers driving and I look at the team who won the yeah. Spa 24 Hours in the World Cup not so many weeks ago. You know, it's a exactly. fantastic team, fantastic drivers, despite the fact it's exceptionally close in qualifying or was exceptionally close in qualifying. They've not had much time with the camera because they've just been running away from the race. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, when you've got uh, Yaroslav uh, Shevetsalov and Igor Ogorodnikov, a really, really good dynamic pairing. They really work together and they have been on an absolute tear up, a uh, good run of form uh, quite recently here on the Sim Grid. And we are fast approaching the final 15 minutes of this race. And at the moment, the leaders have currently covered nearly 20, 265 miles of this well ne nearly 266 miles of this circuit so far and i would probably say we're going we're going to hit north of uh, i'd probably say we might hit around about 125 or so laps uh, completed by the end of this race um and james parker now closing in now look how the gap has truncated James Parker, the minute he got past Maxime Chassé, went, I want that ninth position back. And you can see who's just in front, René Sivera. The gap between them now is six tenths of a second. And Parker has been closing in on the BMW. Now, René Sivera was very, very honest, said the BMW is a bit like a tank, which we all know, and we've already talked about earlier on in the race. But he was hoping for another top 10 finish. And that will help the confidence for the Unicorns of Love. Uh, and especially when they go to uh, Paul Ricard on July, 4th, July 3rd for the penultimate round of the championship. Who knows, that could give them a bit of confidence, a bit of motivation. You know, there's a long straightaway down Le Castellet, and that could play to some car's strengths, and it could play a detriment to others, like, say, those that don't have that top-line speed, like, say, the Porsche, like, say, the Honda, and a few other cars on, uh, that are represented in this championship. But again, Yaroslav Honzik, I think um, he's doing, he's, you know, we, we know what Jardier is like. He, we, we, we saw that brilliant overtake around the outside earlier on when we saw problems for Yannick Huov when they got caught up with the back marker. I think it was TF Racing uh, through the corkscrew of all places. Um, but he's just biding his time. He's, he, he's just deciding, you know what, I'm not going to risk it because I've got 13 and a half minutes to go. Why do I need to chance it when I know the guy in front of me has got to do a pit stop? Yeah, there's just no point in going through at the moment. I mean, he's got nearly 13 seconds behind. If that 66 car was right on his, uh, his rear at the moment, then he might say, you know, he needs to get on with it. But uh, for the moment, with that kind of margin, he really does just need to stick behind. And even if he can make the overtake, probably uh, uh, advise against it, unless it's really, really obvious um, that it's going to pay off. Because, uh, you're right, it's just not worth it at this stage. It's going to be another great result for Yassit, who've had a, a good season so far. And uh, this is going to be another, another great, consistent result for them. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, may, it means that uh, these two are going to kind of stay where they are for the moment. Giametti and, uh, and Honzik are just going to, you know, just, uh, just kind of drive in a line at the moment, really. Uh, and other battles are probably going to be uh, more side-by-side -side, uh, and so on. But... It's equally as effective for Honzik just to stay there for the moment and uh, and stay where he is. Even though he did have a look into turn six, there we might have to eat our words in a minute. Uh, but uh, but no, it would certainly be the sensible thing if he were to stick behind right now. I think Jardier's fans on his uh, on his stream are probably saying, "Hey hey, they're saying you're going to be holding back," and Jardier's going like, "Hold my beer." Um, <laughs> that's probably what he's going to do now because now he's going to make us eat humble pie because they, they've just come through Rainey's now into the uh, right hander here at turn ten. And oh, oh my word. and Pogardel has lost fifth position, and that is coming out of turn six. Over rotation coming out of turn six onto the Ray Hall straight. That has cost GRTC a position. load of BMW. points. And BMW's that got is well. yeah. that is uh, Jordan Grant Smith 
in the 411. Now we saw Stefan Zero. Stefan Zero was was the was back was facing the other way coming out of turn four and Jordan Grant Smith uh, has managed to bring that car back up to what is now going to be sixth position but what this also means is that Alberto Garcia and uh, Gerard uh, Martinez Amer as all is a little bit of a touch there courtesy of Chasse on Bastian Lindner now that was a bit cheeky, that was a bit rude I think, and that was coming out of the corkscrew and heading into Rainey's. So Bastian Lindner was battling away with Maxime Chassé I think for position and probably got the, uh, had probably got an 11th and then Chassé just a did a little bit as what they like to say in supercars, a bit of a bump and run. Yeah, look, well we didn't quite see how that all started really, but uh, which would probably uh, help us explain the story, but certainly it didn't look uh, it didn't look too friendly between those two at the moment and it looks like that fight's going to go out right to the very end as well with Chassé really starting to fall back right now and Lindner um, refining himself a little bit after those issues he had earlier on. Um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, another couple of points for Odox Motorsport who are going to get in front of Giametti as well. Um, so they're going to be in fourth place gaining uh, lots and lots of points. Um, but finally, it looks like the 66 Lexus is going to become another different car to get on the podium. So far, we've only seen three different types of car. Well, yeah, three different types of car, but also three different teams on the podium so far in the two races this season. We're only going to extend that to four different teams. Um, so there really are some dominant ones starting to come to the fore. But the 66 right in that championship conversation now, a little bit outsiders, but they are still in the conversation, as are the triple three team. We'll have to do the maths after this race, obviously, and figure it out obviously we can see the top five right now um, but uh, not much has changed uh, since the last time we saw it since uh, the gaps at the front of the field are fairly large here is how the one two one got in front though is it or is this a do is, is this another uh, no, issue th this is linda this is, sorry yeah yeah this is linda so chassis uh -huh. runs wide out of turn six again and now linda's gonna have the run on him go through into the corkscrew linda just plants it on the inside gives him a little bit of a rub and then chasse thinks one good turn deserves another and then he turns the Audi round uh two wrongs don't make a right there gents i'm afraid but obviously we'll leave that one to race control uh, we're now into the last nine minutes out of 180 minutes of racing here for round three of season three with the SimGrid's Endurance Cup by Thrustmaster. Here's another replay that we're going to see now. Now, this is when Jan, this is when um, Pogardo just lost it, well, put the power down, I'll and the Audi it. behind. That was Odox Motorsport right up his back bumper. That was Alberto Garcia managing to do a bit of a Matias Ekstrom, go hard or go home, round the outside, and actually kept the throttle pinned through the dusty stuff and kept fifth place. So Robert Pagardo was on course for a fifth place finish and handed two places, one to Alberto Garcia and the other one to the 411 of GC Racing and Friends, Jordan Grant Smith. As James Parker now senses an opportunity with just under just over eight minutes to go. He sees Rene Siva right in front of him. We ride on board with the 888 uh, Coach Dave Academy, Aston Martin Vantage V8 GT3 over the crest through turn one now into the braking zone for turn two the andretti hairpin you can see there's a couple of back mark there's a couple of cars just up ahead one of them looks to be the uh the nissan i think that is the triple three of uh maximilian Verdi. so now this has really heated up as <laughs> was that siva on the dust there i think that was the bmw getting a little bit out of shape coming out of turn three this is no longer the battle for ninth. This is the battle for eighth position. This is going to be close. Yeah, it is indeed. Well, it already is quite close, but it's about to get closer. Uh, going up towards the court screw at the moment. All these got a little bit of a mistake from the triple three there. And now the chance for Siva up in the inside into the court screw. It looks oh easy. Straight through. Nicely done on the brakes there from Siva. And he's into eighth place. And the Triple Three looking for as many points as they can possibly get to remain in championship contention. Trying to keep up with those guys up front who've been getting podiums so far. But it's going to be very, very difficult if they keep losing positions. It looks like the Triple Three might be about to lose another one because James Parker's on an absolute mission at the moment. He looks very, very quick indeed. And I can't see how this Nissan is going to stay in front. Well, in the meantime, Yaroslav Honsik has got past Patrick Girometti. 
for second position on the road. Ginometti yet to do that pit stop. And if it is, if memory serves me correctly, the system software will ping them for a 130 second post race penalty if a pit stop hasn't been completed post race. As James Parker all over the back bumper of Maximilian Vidi going around the outside of the Nissan. That's brave going through turn three. As Giromessi now pits, it was six minutes and 18 seconds on the clock remaining. As Parker nearly goes rally crossing coming out of turn four. As he closes up onto the. Uh, triple three Nissan of Maximilian Vedi as Vedi loses a bit of traction coming out of turn five they're going to go up to turn six Parker slots in behind the Nissan so Jeremy Lefile from team Fordzilla Lexus now up into the final step on the rostrum with just under six minutes to go Siva now getting away he's got away by the tune of 1.35 seconds ahead of Maximilian Vedi from virtual uh, drivers by TX3 in the triple three Nissan. That's a triple A esports entry with Simon Dutaum and Alexandre Vormont as Parker looks one way, then the other. Through into turn 11 to try and get the cut back on the Nissan. He's opened the door. He's got a gap. He's going to try and use the power. That straight line torque advantage of that Aston Martin. Oh. But Maximilian Vetti still stays in front. There comes. Uh, the 4-4-6, that's got Mirko Ferrari and Parker up the inside. Parker up the inside of Maximilian Vedi to take the position. And there comes Ma uh, Mirko Ferrari, who's going to be outside of the top, who's going to be on the border of the bottom of the top 10 with just under five minutes to go on the clock. As uh, we now head on to the 126th lap of this race, the Endurance Cup. Season 3, Round 3 by Thrustmaster here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. The championship lead is going to change hands, but then we wait for the dust to settle. It hasn't settled yet here in Monterey, California as Bastian Lindner still trying to close in on Maxime Chasse in the number 7 Mercedes AMG Evo of Virtual Drivers by TX3. Number 7. It is still getting very much nip and tuck between these two drivers here. And Mirko Ferrari, AFR, uh, SFR Italia must be counting their lucky stars a little bit because Ferrari has, has gotten back on the road behind Parker and Vedi. And now the 446 Lexus rounds out the top 10. Oh yeah, it's uh, just in front at the moment. I thought they were going to stay outside the top ten. I was sure they were going to, but nope. In the end, it looks like they will finish inside the top ten. Very, very close though. From seventh place all the way down to 13th. It is all for position really, uh, with not much uh, lap traffic involved. But uh, certainly on a charge right now, Mirko Ferrari to make up some time for the mistake that they made at the end of the first in trying to change drivers in the end a couple of missed clicks and it looks like they weren't able to do that and uh, they've not given themselves that much time to recover from this um, they couldn't give him too much time because he was going to exceed driving limits uh, if he got into that car again too early so uh, they did have to wait it out a little bit um, but uh, still Mick Ferrari is uh, now out there into the corkscrew wow that was cl so close to the back of the Nissan he actually nearly hit Vedi and uh, has to go across the dust on the right hand side there too uh, uh, because he was carrying so much speed so he continues on in 10th place but uh, nearly rear-ended the Nissan uh, and, that's, uh, and uh, that would not have been good whatsoever as Lindner is now on the back of Chasse really starting to struggle he was right up there with the likes of Parker not so long ago but for whatever reason he's really starting to struggle whether that's on tyres or what the reason for that is the Mercedes is really starting to tail off now Rinse to just over two minutes and 20 seconds remaining on the clock and this battle for 11th position between the number seven Mercedes of Maxime Chasse and the number 12 Audi of Bastian Lindner is coming to its eventual fulcrum the crescendo nigh on upon us Mirko Ferrari from SFR Italia runs wide he bumped over the curbs coming out of turn number four and nearly came a cropper in front of the uh, one uh, one of the uh, Mercedes from racing line motorsport that will be uh, either that will probably more than likely be Igor Zanella behind the wheel of the 193 but 
You can see in picture, in picture, in picture. There is your leader. We're now on the 129th and penultimate lap of this race. And at the end of it all, we'll have covered nearly, the leader will have covered nearly 291 miles. It has been an absolutely dominant display by the Lada Sport Rosneft crew with uh, Yaroslav uh, Shevetalov and Igor Ogorodnikov having led the minute they got into the lead after dramas for those that surrounded them on the grid. The likes of the number 28 of GTWR Ray, uh, R8G Academies, Micheli Nerbi, uh, and in that crew as well was uh, Michael Romagnoli, and they are nowhere to be seen. It has been also a success rate, 100% success rate, for the drivers in second position. The pairing of Eamon Murphy and Yaroslav Honzik, aka Jardier, from Yazheet Richard Mille, who will be the most consistent team in this championship with a successive 100% uh, success rate of hitting the runner-up step. The 130th lap and final lap of this race now underway as Shevardolov goes into the Andretti hairpin. Bastian Lindner closing in, has a sniff of a, an opportunity to try and get 11th from Maxime Chasse in the number seven, but that looks to be far slipping away. Timer strikes zero. 180 minutes have now elapsed, and we wait with bated breath. We anticipate what's going to happen, and there is drama for Mirko Ferrari. Oh my goodness, and also Maximilian Verdi. They have dropped out of the top 10. It looks like Chasse now up into ninth. Linda looks to frantically get up past the SFR. Oh. Italian car, but it hits the back of it. Oh, Mirko Ferrari's race has gone from bad to worse within a handful of seconds. And that means that there will be two virtual driver by TX3 cars in the top 10 come the end of this race. But now through Rainey's for the final time, our leaders, our new championship leaders, the Lada Sport Rosnev crew. It has been perfection for Igor Okorodnikov as Yaroslav Shevetalov brings the car over the start finish line. Lada Sport Rosnev win round three. And what's more, they take the championship lead here in Monterey. It's going to be another great performance from Eamon Murphy and Yaroslav Honsik from Yazheet Yaz Richard Mille, the 149 Ferrari started down in 18th position alberto garcia brings home odox motorsport in fourth place ahead of the 411 of gc racing and friends jordan grant smith robert pagado brings home the gtrc porsche in sixth position but here comes mirko ferrari it would have been a top 10 but it's going to be 11th unfortunately for sfr italia having been in the front of the field for most of the race until the problems at the first pit stop Chasse takes 9th, Vedi takes 10th, Ferrari in 11th, Lindner, Depré, Christensen for Paul Simsport rounds out the top 17. But Jardier comes out of the 11th and final corner. And after nearly 291 laps, he brings the car home from 18th to 2nd second position and what's more just a handful of corners well actually the final corner being negotiated by team fordzilla lexus's jeremy lefile and him and fabian Pifay become the fourth different team this season on the podium as team fordzilla lexus started down in seventh finished in p3 ewan o'leary my oh my has this championship well and truly come alive here at Laguna Seca. The battle certainly is still on, yeah, between uh, those three teams that we mentioned, Odex Motorsport, Larder Sport, and Yassi, not necessarily in that order anymore. It looks like the championship leaders are going to go down to third, but we certainly have uh, the team Vaz Ford, Zill, and Alexis you just mentioned there on the podium and possibly in with championship contention as well with only two rounds to go. So uh, you never know, they could pull something off as well as virtual drivers by TX. Three, they uh, got two of their cars in the uh, in the top ten 
by the end of this race. So they've had a decent outing as well, um, to be fair to them. So they're, they're in the conversation as well. It seems to be between those top three primarily, but uh, there are a few guys just lurking in behind, ready and waiting if there are any problems uh, for those in front. But yeah, a, a dominant drive in the end by Lada Sport team at the top of their game at the moment and it seemed very very hard to stop them at the moment and nobody can stop them today it seems it will wait and see if anybody can in the next in the coming rounds but uh, goodness me they've put on a show today they did indeed well let's see if we can get some drivers in i think we've got one actually wait uh, actually let's bring them in our runners up for round three let's bring in from yaz heat richard meal Eamon Murphy and Yaroslav Honzik. Let's see if we can bring them in for a quick chat. So, Eamon, Jardier, firstly, guys, a 100% success rate of finishing second on the rostrum. But what's even more impressive, we know you guys have always got pace, but a, different, a difficult qualifying session started 18th. Um, how are you guys feeling after that race? You want Jordy? You start. <laughs> you, you did a quali you did a quali um, <laughs> Yeah, so because I was doing SRO all week, um, I literally just jumped on this morning, um, mm -hmm. and Jordy sent me a setup. So yeah, we we're probably out of position, but um, yeah, it was a bit of a it was a bit of a crazy race again. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Jardier, let's come to you. Um, just a really, really interesting race. Obviously, uh, you know, you got behind the wheel, you got the car up to P9, had to give a couple of positions back um, through, I think it was more than likely, I think there was an incident in front of you and you had to give the positions back, but you still kept charging forward, still with a smile on your face. Um, but for you guys to bring the car home in P2 must be a, a pretty good feeling to still be in the hunt going to Paul Ricard on July 3rd. Yeah, as, uh, as someone said, it was like quite ex unexpected because we haven't practiced too much and one was busy with SRO and I was busy with other things as well so uh, we somehow put it together t today in the morning and uh, we had a, like a decent qualification and I was really careful in the first hour of the race you know I was not pushing too much at the beginning I wasn't doing any sudden moves or risky moves and looking at the competition it was actually the, the key to win today or to get to the P2 yeah, I mean, uh, we, we saw you having a battle with, I think it was Yannick Ruoff um, earlier on, and then all of a sudden a back marker got in the way, and you just literally, we, we saw in your on your stream, like, literally how calm you were. You just were like, yeah, I'm just going to put this car here. And, <laughs> like, coming out of the exit of the corkscrew. But, yeah, this is a very, very difficult circuit to overtake, but you guys proved that with the pace that you had, um, to keep yourself, you know, second on the rostrum again for the third race, Last time out at Monza, first race at the Hungara Ring. Things are looking pretty good for Paul Ricard, wouldn't you say? Uh, yeah, I would say uh, I would like. Well, our team is really strong. You know, we are doing really good job in the past races, as the results say. We just need to work a little bit more on qualification so we can fight for the P ones. And I think we need to continue what we are doing, just staying out of the trouble. You know, taking it easy because I've obviously in the in the first three races this is the key to victory or or getting to the to the podium like just avoiding the problems and not rushing things and taking it easy as we did you know like the big balls of steel from emon who did an incredible overtake on p3 that was just fantastic you know like uh, <laughs> crazy yeah so so, so uh guys uh congratulations on second place well done we'll see you at round four at paul Ricard. See you guys later. See you guys. So, big thank you to both uh, Eamon Murphy and Jardy Ape, second in the race. Uh, let's see if we can... Ah, the good thing is... Uh, let's see if we can bring in Team Fordzilla Lexus' is Fabien Puffet. Uh, so, Fabien, good to have you with us. Uh, congratulations on hitting the podium. Uh, qualified... Uh, you, I think you went out for quali. Uh, but yourself and Jeremy, you did a fantastic job to to keep out of trouble and, and bring the car home to the podium. Yeah, indeed. Um, it was a pretty good race. So, yeah, I did the quality. Ended up P7. It was, yeah, as usual on this championship, it was pretty close. Um, and then, yeah, just had to manage a bit of traffic and 
trying to climb up some positions. Uh, we had a pretty good race, we could have had a shot at P2 in the end, but sadly I completely missed my pit box on the final stop and we lost about 10 seconds, just where we needed to fight uh, the Ferrari in P2. Uh, and obviously you guys become the, the fourth different team to hit the podium. Um, you guys looking to fight a little bit further up the field at Paul Ricard in, in a few weeks time? Yeah. We hope so, but uh, even though I have to say the uh, balance of performance work has been really good so far on the whole season, it's gonna it's gonna depend mostly on it because just a few kilos uh, can impact the pace uh, quite a bit. So if we can have like a really top tier competitive car on Paul Ricard, we will for sure try to fight for the maximum points. Well, Fabien, firstly, congratulations to you and Jeremy, and we wish you all the very best of luck for the penultimate round at Le Castellet. Thank you. So, a big thank you there to Team Fordzilla Lexus's uh, seven, Fabien Piffet. Uh, let's see if we can now bring in our winners for round three. It's two on the trot for Lada Sport Rosneft. Let's bring in Igor Ogorodnikov and Yaroslav uh, Shevatolov, our race winners for round three. So, Yaroslav, Igor, uh, congratulations first of all. Uh, you guys hit the front and you never looked back. Um, Igor, I want to go to you first of all, uh, because we saw a battle for position and then all of a sudden we see you come charging through at the corkscrew of all places. Uh, I've never seen that before. Uh, you must have had full confidence in that car. Oh uh, yeah, thank you. Hello everyone. Uh, was uh, that was one of our best races. Uh, every time we are surprised at uh, our result. Uh, yeah, uh, now we did a huge uh, lead gap uh, in the race, but our opponents uh, also take uh, took a lot of points, and now difference in standings is not so weak. So let's see what will happen in next races. Yeah, uh, Yaroslav, uh, if we can, we'll go. So, uh, firstly, apologies for the technical difficulties we've just had there, but had a really good chat with uh, our winners, Mr. Shevatolov and Ogorodnikov for Lada Sport Rosneft. Of course, there has been a poll that has been put in the chat. Team of the day, uh, Yaz Heat, Richard Mill, ahead of Lada Sport Rosneft. 360 votes in total. Um, but Ewan, just your final thoughts uh, ahead, uh, well, after what's been an interesting, brilliant midway point of of season three for the Endurance Cup by Thrustmaster. Yeah, it has been a, a good race, especially for Laguna Seca, where it can be very, very difficult to overtake at times. But there were some fantastic battles up and down the field in the end, and uh, yeah, a, an enjoyable race. Certainly a great drive, especially from uh, Gas Heat and uh, Odox Motorsports, come back through the field and save their championship hopes, um, which are going to really kind of develop uh, throughout the nine hours of Paul Ricard, as uh, uh, as uh, Yardier was saying to us. Though they do need to qualify a little bit better if they want to. Uh, win this championship and defend their title uh, from uh, season two but it, either way they've done a fantastic job today uh, fully deserved second place once again uh, once again we've got only four teams who have finished on the podium in the first three races which is a remarkable consistency from those guys up front um, and uh, you know the, the team that didn't make it that have made it before Odox Motorsport were only fourth so yep, there's some real consistency going on up the front of this field and uh, yeah it, it's keeping the championship very very close going into the final two rounds and as spectators and broadcasters and whatever we can be very thankful for that indeed so Firstly, a big thank you to our partners, as always, Thrustmaster and Coach Dave Academy. Don't forget, you can head to thrustmaster.com. Uh, if you want to pick up something like, say, maybe a new set of pedals, uh, maybe even a T300 RS, you can also head to Coach Dave Academy 
uh, where you can get your setups, uh, you can get your Assetto Corsa Competizione track maps, you can also get uh, professional driver tuition from the likes of Mr. Simgrid himself, Dave Perel, uh, also Jordan Pepper and Nick Foster. We've got quite a lot happening. We've got uh, the the, uh, con the conclusion of the Kyle Army series round five next Wednesday. Open GT3 with custom BMP, uh, BOP. We then got the next round of more female races by Thrustmaster Rockets, uh, which will go to Brands Hatch on the 21st of June. And then we get to the uh, end of June with a centerpiece. Of course, the SimGrid VCO World Cup qualifying for the 12 hours of Donington Park will be uh, on the evening of the 24th of June. And then we go once around the clock on Saturday, the 26th. For more information, head to thesimgrid.com for more, uh, ex uh, you know, more information about the championships. There's also daily racing. Don't forget to follow us on all relevant social medias. It has been an absolute pleasure for myself, Alex Goldschmidt, and Ewan O'Leary to call this midway point of the season for season three of the SimGrid Endurance Cup by Thrustmaster. We wish you all a very good weekend. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the SimGrid very, very soon indeed. Goodbye.